On this uh, week's three sides of the coin, look, you got to get through the the first fifteen minutes of us bitching, but it needs to be stop. <laughs> <laughs> the tool is fully exposed. The tool exposes himself. <laughs> I'm impressing the hell out of myself. That was awesome. And then, and then Tommy rambles on about stuff, and I don't know. Eventually, it turns into a good show. So just fucking stick around, all right? <laughs> This is Three Sides of the Coin, talking all things KISS. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. So you love the show. Go to itunes.threesidesofthecoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Three Sides of the Coin. I am one of your co-hosts, Michael Brandvold. And as always, not always, most of the time, 90% of the time, I'm joined by Tommy Summers and Mark Cicchini. First of all, guys, we got to stop making a habit of these 8 a.m. Saturday recordings. Amen. <laughs> Don't take it personally, you listener. But you ain't worth me getting up this early to frickin' record this. Not unless you really want to pay me to get up. Because remember, California for me, Minnesota for Tommy, Detroit for Mark. So it's 8 a.m. for me, 10 a.m. Tommy, 11 a.m. for Mark. Mark, it's 11 a.m. It's almost lunchtime, actually. Yeah, I had band practice at 9, two hours, and then here. Because we were rehearsing, as you can tell, I'm not in the hallowed halls of the KISS confine at home. So I'm at my office, and uh, Saturday morning, just kept the doors closed, didn't open uh, Didn't open today. It's been a busy week. So, so this time of year, though, too, because I sell a lot of uh, topsoil and sand. So this time of year, no one's buying topsoil. So right around, usually right around October 1st or so, that kind of stuff slows down. But, so this is how much we love you, you people. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I mean, think about oh, it. Oh, shit. I mean, let me ask you this. You, listener, would you get your ass out of bed for us? Hell no. <laughs> I don't blame him. I wouldn't either. <laughs> yeah, why, why would they? Exactly. Uh, all right, so this show this week is going to be all over the freaking place. So let's just start with a little explanation. We've got a special guest this week. It's a very cool special guest. But we had serious Skype issues in that we could not do a group video call with our guest. Couldn't get the three of us and our guest on. We could only do two people. So Tommy stepped up, manned up, and he took over the reins of the interview this week. And I gotta say, thumbs up, Tommy. I don't know if you watched it, yet, Thank Mark, you. but no, I haven't had time. Too busy. I, I actually, I had, I had, I had, I, had a, I had a client show last night. So as I was driving home from the client show at midnight, I had YouTube playing in my car, and I was listening to the audio as I drove home. So I listened to it last night. I didn't watch it, but uh, Tommy did a fabulous job. Thank he, you, sir. He had his his normal Ed McMahon tone. Hey-o. You know, there was no, there was no stupid tool jokes. There was no swingers yeah. jokes. There was nothing. It was, it was Tommy just being blinders on, focused, and trying to get the information for you people. Doing what we don't pay him to do. Hell yeah. So anyway, so the interview is going to just be Tommy. That was done last Tuesday. <laughs> Saturday, we're recording the rest of the show here. And we've actually got two other pieces that we're going to drop in that were pre-recorded pieces as well. So this show is nothing but pre-recorded stuff that we're splicing together. It's like, I don't know, remember when Seinfeld did the 100th episode and they didn't record anything? They just took bits from every episode and made a new show out of it? That's pretty much this. That's pretty much But this. it is original we're content. The, can we fast forward to the can we go home now part? <laughs> <laughs> what's, for lunch, what's for lunch okay. today, Mark? I don't, Liz is in New York. Ooh, I don't know so, what it means Mark is starving. Yeah, hardly, hardly. No, actually, you know what? I like I said, I had a, I never get sick. I bet you I haven't had a cold in ten years. And uh, Wednesday started not feeling good. Thursday was brutal. Yesterday was 
bad. This morning I'm just above bad, but not not myself. Not feel, so, so when so, you're when you're, I don't know about you guys. When I'm sick, I can't eat. I just I, I don't eat. Or, I mean, uh, it's funny too because it's. Uh, I'm sure Tommy in your your neck of the woods, uh, the cider mills are a big deal because that seems to be a big Midwest thing. You guys go to the cider mill at all? Cider I don't. Is I'm, that, I'm sure a, they is, exist. Is, is that a swingers club? <laughs> That's a big deal. Here. <laughs> oh, that's the <a> cherry pit. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tommy's a little slow. I didn't think he would miss that one. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, we're we're working the other day, and we're working right next to a fucking uh, cider mill. I'm like, fuck this. So I, I haven't really been eating the last three days. I, I've, I've had like a couple donuts and some cider. I just don't feel good. So, so I haven't so, been. So enough. so basically today we've got a hungry mark, a sick mark, and a tired mark. Holy crap, are we in for it? Don't put no, a quarter. No, you're, don't you're put not, a, he's not going to say anything. I just yeah, I just want to roll up and go to bed. Don't put a quarter <laughs> oh, in the mark today. <laughs> All right, so um, let's let's get the show rolling here, Tommy. First thing, any comments you want to share? No, not comments. I just want to make a comment. Okay. Um, first off, thank you to everybody who has been supporting us, and we appreciate how we're still doing great with um, views and everything over the last several weeks. We don't have guests, so that proves to the naysayers that we don't have to have guests for you guys to actually be interested. So thank you for that. But I do want to say a couple of things. There are some people who probably aren't regular listeners who just seem to completely miss the whole point of no, last they, they, week's they watch, episode. They watch every day, Tom, every week. Yeah, well, they completely missed the whole point. The whole point of last week was the benefit. If it wasn't for the benefit, we wouldn't have had a show like we had for you. We gave you exclusive content because of the show. And I felt that it was important that you guys hear the backstories. If you want to see or know about the reaction between Ace and Gene on stage, go watch the video. They're they're everywhere. And I just feel that um, some people just, no matter what you do for them, they just don't seem to understand the concept of this show. We've survived this long because we do what we want to do and we go with our gut. We've survived this long because we have not listened to any of your expert advice. Not one of you. Yeah. You know, so uh, I just wanted to say thank you to the people that are supporting us and that get it and fuck off to the ones that don't. <laughs> Sounds like me. Yeah. I'm kind of, I'm, well, I'm taking up a little slack here for Mark because he's not feeling very well. We can't put a quarter in him because I don't think we have enough quarters to get him going today. So, so I'm going to take the other angle and, and say... Thank you. So last week we talked about um, the matter benefit, and we basically said if you make a donation to three sides of the coin, which we've always had, but we've always put that money towards buying picks and T-shirts and all that other stuff, um, we were going to take whatever you donate to us over the next month, and we would give that directly to matter, and we would yes. match it. Yes. And we would match it. And in the first week... You know, and, I, and, and I'm not going to say the number, but let's yeah. just say thank you very much for the donations that have come in. Maybe at the end of the month we'll go through and just read the people who've made donations. It's mm -hmm. not about bragging about the money. Thank you for the donations for the next three weeks, um, two weeks after you finally listen to this. You can keep making donations to Three Sides of the Coin. Go to our website, threesidesofthecoin.com. Make a donation. It can be a dollar. doesn't matter. Right. Dollar, $10, $100, whatever you want. We will turn around and give that to the Matter organization, and mm -hmm. we will match your donation. And I want to sweeten the pot a little bit. Ooh. Yes. I have spoken to the wonderful people at Matter, and I have been able to get some Matter T-shirts. From the event, staff T-shirts. Oh, those are the ones so, that have the band names on them. Yes. So oh. anybody that donates a hundred dollars or more will get a T-shirt, including the folks who've already done that. So there's a little bit more incentive for you guys to donate to this wonderful cause, and uh, that's the other piece I want to talk about too. 
We've talked about this since the beginning of the show that you vote with your wallet, you do what you want to do with your money because you've earned it and you spend it the way you want. And I want to go out on the limb here and say that there was one other thing that really has frustrated the living shit out of me over the last several weeks is people who think that they know what we are or who we are as people and how we spend our money and what we choose to do. And I want to tell you that it's nobody's business but that person's. And just because you see us doing one thing or another does not mean that we don't give to charitable charitable organizations or do things to help out our fellow human beings in all different walks of life, in all different areas of our own cities. So before you hop on your high horse and start bitching about one thing or another, about how any one of us spend our money or what we do or where we go, you have absolutely zero clue as to what any of us do on a personal, private level. So shut your mouth. God, Tommy, my God, I'm I'm liking this. Well, because it's like I'm sick of this. No, I get it. I'm right there with you. You know, it, it, it goes it goes right back to people who have always bitched about Gene and Paul never doing anything. You don't know the amount of stuff they privately donate behind the scenes, totally. and they don't that, do it for PR. They do it for is, the goodness. That is something. I'll tell you. This, uh, Tommy and I talked about this, and, and it really does go to the Gene Simmons thing. And I subtly say some things sometimes, and I'll give you a great example. All during the $2,000, $10,000, $50,000 fiasco with Gene, I had to read time and time again the words greedy and how greedy and how greedy. I happen to know as fact the philanthropy that comes out of Mr. Simmons would choke a fucking whale. But you know what? He does it the right way. He doesn't need to announce it to everybody. These are things I know as fact. Gene gives so much that you wouldn't even fucking know. Like I said, it would choke a whale how much money he gives to not only charities, but personally. Again, he it, it just bothers me as a person when I know that some and, and yes, Gene's in my favorite band and blah, blah, blah. But God damn it. Enough with the greedy bullshit. You don't know. Quit it. It's wrong. You know, and that applies. To- Hold on. Here's how this steps in with us, too. I noticed on a couple – I was talking privately with Tommy because I've gotten a couple – just a couple. Um, it's easy to count my money sometimes if I say I'm buying the Gene Simmons experience, if I'm going on the cruise. I mean you guys all know how much that stuff costs. Whatever the, the – you know, 3000 here, 2000 But guys – and because I've had that too. Oh, your money could go someplace. It, it, look, man, I don't count your money. Don't count mine. That's all because I've had a couple of the. Oh, you're greedy. This is you aimed at me, and you know you could put that money to better. Yeah, look, man, don't tell me what because you don't know anything about me. You all you know is the goofiness that goes on here, and I don't have to explain anything to you. Tommy, Tommy and I had a private conversation the other day, and we were kind of talking about, you know, things we've done for, well, let's just say just other things that it's nobody's other's fucking business. And that's what we got talking about this. It's like, because we see some of the comments, oh, you're greedy or you're bragging. or you're, What? Like I've said many times, it goes back to like what uh, we've we talked about this on the show before. Everybody is a number one KISS fan if you say you're a number one KISS fan. You don't have to collect stuff. You don't have to go to meet and greets. You don't, you don't have, have to do to anything. Prove it. You don't, there's nothing to prove it. No. If, you li- if you listen to KISS a lot and you support them, and, 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 and supporting doesn't mean with money. If you support their music and, and you love them, then you're the number one fan. I- idiots like me who spend tons of money, that, that, that's it. That's what we like to do. It doesn't mean we're better fans or smarter. or what. It doesn't mean anything. But it's at certain points, though, too, you know, I've been very fortunate in life with uh, my relationship with the band uh, members and crew and being blessed with being able to contribute to, you know, kiss projects and books and doesn't mean anything. But when I talk about stuff, that's not bragging. I did it. (laughs) There's a big difference. It goes back to the Thai cop thing. 
you know, it ain't bragging if you can do it. And it's not even so much if you do. If you did it at that point, you're just stating facts. That's all. I don't think I'm a better Kiss fan than anybody. I've been lucky, damn lucky, to do the things that I've, I've done and I've been able to do and continue to do. But I'll tell you right now, I've got very close friends who I love dearly who have done way more KISS-related things than I have. I have dear friends who have way bigger KISS collections than mine, and I I'm, I'm probably have one of the bigger ones in the world. But I don't... You guys just see like, it because we're on this show every week. <laughs> but I don't get all pissy at anybody because they've done... Dude, that's not what life's all about. We come here each week just to have fun. And I hope you guys, for the most part, I can tell you guys are in on the fun. Well, like right. Tom said, this week was 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 weird in that way when Tommy got grief for helping out with a fucking wonderful project that, that just Kiss happened or, you know, Gene Simmons and Ace Frehley happened to be a part of. That's, look, as a person, that, that makes me mad. And as a person, it bothers me because Tommy's a dear friend of mine. How could somebody attack the guy for fucking being part of something that's helping people? I would ask well, anybody who would attack you, well, what are you fucking, att- what have you done? Uh, well, and, and to your point, that's what bothered me the most this week. It's like, look, you can tell me that the show we did was shit. You can tell me that I'm an idiot or that I didn't ask the right questions or I didn't tell you what you wanted to know. But don't start attacking the charity and the event itself because don't for don't, me, atta- don't attack you giving of your time. And, and yeah, there's a tie in because Gene was there. But I, I went in and I gave up my time because I wanted to make a difference. It's not the first charity organization that I've done stuff with, but it's the first one that I have felt a part of and had nothing to do with the KISS thing. These people that run Matter, that work at Matter, are truly some of the, the nicest people I've ever met. They're so welcoming and so grateful and so kind that I fit. I feel like here's a charity I fit into. And this isn't a one-time thing. I'm going to continue doing stuff with them and give of my time whenever I can to help them out because I believe in this whole thing they're doing. And, and to Mark's point from earlier, did you guys know that Gene Simmons supports 1,400 kids in Africa? It's 1,400. True. He pays for everything for these kids. That's just one out of many things that we know about that he does and Paul and the rest of the band, Eric, Tommy, everybody. So, you know, it's just, it's very frustrating to me. And I know that this is a lecture today and some of you aren't going to want to hear this, but too bad. This is part of the show. I'm just sick and tired of the few people that whine and piss and moan that don't do jack shit for anybody else. Because you know what? You are the type of person that's part of the problem in this world right now because you're not willing to help somebody else out. Sometimes just literally smiling at someone and opening a, opening a door for somebody and saying good morning and hello can change a person's day. What is wrong with that? If Mark wants to go out and spend the money that he spends on the different kiss experiences, great. I'm not going to do the same thing, but I applaud him wanting to do it and I support him. And it's none of your business to tell anybody, him, me, Mark, Michael, anybody, how we should spend our money, where we should live, what we should do. And I just, I, I'm kind of appalled at the balls on some of these people who probably haven't donated so much as a nickel in their life, pissing and moaning and whining about one thing or another. And I'm just sick of it. So, Boom. Thank you for everybody that's that's supporting us, and fuck you to everybody that's an asshole. <laughs> <coughs> Guys, this this little rant here, I was surprised because Tommy and I talked about it privately a couple days ago. We're like, what's with the negative stuff? You know, and we just started sharing stories about, you know, posts that we've got on our site and, and private posts we got by people complaining. I'm like, motherfucker, if you're complaining about this, then go do something about it. Well, why are you concerned about what we do? You are well, what we do. You, you are complaining about Tommy, again, giving of his time to do something to help somebody else and then take more time, hours out of his week to sit down and share that experience for you free of charge that you can watch for free. You have no commitment to this. If it really, if it really, really bothers you, 
you don't have to hit a play button. Nobody, including us, are making you hit that play button. You haven't had to spend one penny in the last four years to watch this show. Yeah, so and really, are we asking are you, you to buy what, us what, a fucking Gene Simmons vault? No. What are you complaining about You want to talk about, about a waste? Give me a break. So, and and, and, and I just wanted, I, I've seen some of those posts, and I've gone into it with some people, and I just say, listen, you have no idea what anybody's doing in donations and charity based on what you see publicly. A couple people have at least stood up and admitted, you know what, you're right. I don't know what they're doing. That's the whole point. People do not do charity for PR. I shouldn't. No. Say, I shouldn't say all people, but many people do not do charity for the PR. You will not see a press release every time somebody donates ten dollars. That doesn't mean, and that's not just celebrities. That's just the uh, your your next door neighbor. You don't know what they are doing privately, so. Stop criticizing people for not doing anything charitable when you have no freaking clue what they're doing. Well, yeah, and in, in a month from now when I'm boxing up food that's going to Africa or helping out when I can, guess what, guys? I'm not going to talk about it on three sides. The only reason you guys know what happened is because I shared it with you because it was the KISS tie-in. That's it. None of us here are any better than any of our listeners. We are kiss tards, just like the rest of you guys. Even maybe, Gene's may, band. May, maybe bigger because we actually spend hours doing this and put up with your bullshit. Well, yeah. And then on top of that, you the know. Buttons for to, punishment. Well, yeah. Any of you guys can do what we're doing. Any of you can start your own show. Any of you guys can learn photography. You can learn how to work with bands like Michael does. You can do the experiences that Mark does. Go out and earn it. Do it. You guys have the opportunity. It's not like we have this corner on everything that we don't share with everybody else. This is all possible for any one of you in your own lives if it's something that you really want to do. And I'm just, I'm just, this week was really disheartening for me because I see all of the negativity about the charity par portion of it. Like I said, tell me I'm a dumbass. Tell me that I'm shitty at giving interviews. I don't care. That's fine. You have an opinion and I respect that. We have that. told you that. Yeah, exactly. See, they tell me that. But don't tell me that I should or shouldn't do a charity or that we should or shouldn't spend our money a certain way or any of that. That's my issue. I want to say something real quick. I won't go into a long rant like that. But for everybody out there who thinks they know me because they've watched over almost 250 episodes, you know the character I play on Three Sides of the Coin. You don't know me, the real person. Yeah, and, Michael and, the Brain Heenan. And, and, and we've said this publicly on this show many times. This is all a bit. If you're a wrestling fan, I'm the heel. Yeah. I am the heel of this show. My job... The claw. The claw. That is all the people need to know. <laughs> the claw. I, my, my job is to get the, the, the audience pissed and throwing their beer at me in the middle of the ring. I think I do a pretty damn good job of it. Calling you a tool. <laughs> but it's all a put on, people. And yet I just said that, and there's going to be people out there who will call me a liar for saying that. Mm -hmm. I've said yeah. it before. We tell them about the bit, the ace fishing for ace fans, and you still get a handful of people that'll make a thread that goes a hundred comments long. And, and I love when Mike, you said, did you watch the show? Did you watch the show? No, they didn't watch the show, but they're pissed off at a headline about something they don't even know. And fortunately, everybody else gets it. So I, I'm glad that you guys are in on the humor as well. Yeah, and this is not this rant that I'm doing was not directed at you guys that are that listen on a regular basis because you get it. I'm frustrated with all the stuff that you guys are also seeing that we're seeing. I mean, perfect example. Look at Vinnie Vincent. I don't hate Vinnie Vincent. Okay, I've never really even met him other than a couple of times. How can I hate him? He's not my favorite member. Wait, 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 wait a I've second. It... All three of us have done nothing but bash Vinnie Vincent every episode for four years. Who? Not me. No, no, yeah. Mark, Mark, you're lying. That's not true. 
I don't bash. We've Vinny. been told we've bashed oh, Vinny every that's episode true. for th- for four years. Yeah, there you go. That's true. That's did we you do watch, get did, that. Did you watch an episode? No, I stopped watching three years ago. Okay, right. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Yeah, and so for me personally, my feelings haven't changed. I'm excited to go to Atlanta, but I'm excited to go to Atlanta because I get to get on a plane and go someplace other than where I am. And I get to hang out with these two morons for a couple of days and, the weather and Lisa and, and have we're a great throw, time. Because... We're going to throw Mardi Gras beads at Lisa. <laughs> Damn right we are. <laughs> and so, so that's why I go. Now, as far as Vinny's concerned, I think it's wonderful. I hope he has a great convention. I hope he makes a ton of money. I hope he makes a bunch of the fans happy. I am on board, but I am not a bandwagon jumper. I am still not a huge fan, but he gets it. Because if he didn't get it, we wouldn't have the promo that we have. And why do oh, we have the, the promo the, that the, we... the, the promo where they go, "Did you save? Vin- did you save Kiss?" And he says, "Damn right I did." And if you guys think for one second that he doesn't know that that's a three sides thing, you guys are all drinking some kind of pink Kool Aid, <laughs> because he understands how this works and he gets it. Because we don't hate him. We are not bandwagon jumpers. My personal you know, opinion is not changed. Your personal taste in music has no impact on it. And I'm the same way. I don't like guitar shredders, not just Vinny. I'm not a fan of Yngwie. Listen, Me I, will, neither. I will even say this. I'm not a big fan of Randy Rhodes. <gasps> no, me neither. But you know what? Ah, look at the time. Jeez. <laughs> but give me Bruce oh, Kulick on No, No, No. Yes. All right. Yeah. Okay, now, okay. Okay, that's it. Now I'm gone. <laughs> by the so, way, the, by the way, I just bought one of Bruce Kulick's gold mini guitars. Pa- mini gu- gold Crazy Nights packages, mini guitars. You're like the fifth person now that I've heard that that's done that. So that's awesome. I think so that's very cool. About that. That's awesome too. I I Bruce is a wonderful person and a wonderful guitar player. I just don't think he ever fit the band. But, but, but again, let's, let's, that's not you hating him. That's just your on, personal that's opinion. Hold on, hold on. That's not true. Love his work on Revenge and Carnival of Soul. I wish they would have let him be him earlier on. Yes. I think that. So so I do, I do want to say when Bruce was allowed to play like Bruce, fantastic fit perfectly i think for the couple records before they wanted what i always call the la studio musician sound and that's what you got and i think that's why those 80s records are bland milk toast paint by number i i I was so hoping that when when gene and ace did their reunion at the matter event that they would have ace play no 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 uh, my advice for no, no, no is no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Yes. And anyway, back back to Vinny because this is a good segue. Right. So, well, so, because I think it needs to be said because we get all these people pissing and moaning and whining about how we don't deserve this and that we're bandwagon jumpers and that oh, we Tom, hate Tom, Vinny. We, all this we've bullshit. Gotten that for, we've like, gotten that for years for Ace Fraley. I mean, yeah. why, you know, we don't deserve to get. You know, uh, the picture discs. You don't deserve to meet them at shows. We hate them. We hate them. We bash them. Yeah, exactly. So So, anyway, segue to all of you people that are pissed. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Tommy's in a pissy mood today. Uh huh. So let's let's, have it. This week sucked. Let's segue. But you know what? It sucked, but it also had some great high moments. The first one being. The Vinnie Vincent video that debuted, that we oh, debuted yeah. this week. We did. We did. Four, and 40, the Lynn Goldsmith book. Wow. Four, well, let's, let's, wow. we'll get wow. to that one minute. Mm-hmm. So 46 seconds of video for Vinnie Vincent making his first appearance in, I don't know how many, how many years. <laughs> um, we were given the video. We, we debuted it first on, on, uh, on YouTube. Video's gone nuts. People have loved it. It's picked up <laughs> everywhere. I laugh my ass off, and I've been talking to Derek, the promoter, who filmed it. Yeah. He flew, met Vinny. He brought a camera crew, professional gear, everything. 
his expense to go do this. And people were saying, um, how do I know that video isn't 10 years old? That's not Vinny's voice in there. That's somebody else's voice. I hadn't seen that. Jesus. What an amateur promo that was. Yeah, I saw that. It was brilliant. It was freaking brilliant. Or, or the best was, you mean that's all we get? What these people don't understand, if, if you would have had a five-minute long video of Vinny like, just sitting here with me going, hey, guys, you know, for the last 10 years I've been doing this, why would you go? Well, if that's what they yeah. got, they would have said, well, how come we didn't get a 30-minute video? Yeah, which gets back to the, like, if all you're going to do is come online and bitch, don't even come here. <laughs> that's not what it's for. The, the, the vast majority of fans loved, loved, loved yeah. the video from Vinny. They loved <laughs> the little tease. They loved him hiding his face uh -huh. behind his box set. They loved just the, the, was it, five words is all he said, basically. Yeah. They loved the whole thing. They totally got it. The rest of you crazy idiots, go drown your sorrows in pink Kool-Aid. I don't, I, it's just, it, it's. Because it, our listeners are smart, and they're the ones who get it. Well, this isn't, even, this. This isn't even just our listeners. This is just most KISS fans in general get it. They just were very happy to see this video. This video was a tease. You know, this expo is not until January. They're not giving away everything to you in September. There's going to be a little, you nothing. little bit more coming and coming and coming and yeah. coming mm -hmm. um, to tease you, to make you. Vinny isn't going to go answer all of the questions, like Mark said, on a video today. Then why mm -hmm. do you want to go to the expo and hear him finally answer these questions? Yeah, and he's not doing any interviews before the expo, which I think is so smart. He's talking to nobody because those of you that are taking time and money to fly down, drive down, to come to this thing, to pay for your meet and greet experience, to get your autograph, to see him and all of that deserve the very best. And the only way to get the very best is to keep it the way that Derek's doing it. So come down. I, I, I've heard that between now and the expo, he's not going to reveal his full face either. Nice. <laughs> Why would you? Good. I think that's brilliant. I don't know if I don't know what it is. It's the frustrating part when you go through some of the stuff is, especially if you watch the show a lot, and obviously you do look at the numbers. We explain basic marketing at least a little bit each episode, or we touch on it in some forms. The hype and the way things are built, we, because it's part of the Kiss lore. Yeah, you guys are Kiss fans. I was just cool. gonna say. I was just gonna say, aren't we're all Kiss fans? Isn't one of the biggest things we've all loved about Kiss growing up was the mystique, the mystery, you know, the having Big John Hart, you know, putting his yes. hand. So wait a second. So somebody's trying to recreate that fun, that fantasy, that it's excitement. Funny. And you're sitting here going, fuck that. Just give it to me. What the are you and, and, and I want to take the, this direction a little bit off, off to the left here. When people talk about mystique and they, and when you read stuff about Kiss and their mystique and their image and it's not about the music. Guys, Robert Plant's, you know, bare chested, long blonde hair. And, and Jimmy Page's wizard outfit with the bow and is every bit as much as Gene's armor or Paul's star. And or Bruce goes, Springsteen's yeah. jeans. Correct, correct. Guys, everybody, the, the, the band, oh, hold on, you want to go right back to the start? Elvis, the hips and the hair, and uh, it had everything to do with how things are marketed. Everything is that way. I, I That's one thing as a music fan, and it's why I always say people who like rock music if they don't like kiss it's because they didn't listen to them because they, they all they focus on is 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 the you know the pizzazz and stuff but guys that's that's not why their records sold and to, and to be fair that's not why you know uh, robert plant's you know golden god thing that's not why their records sold either. each band had great music that's why the records sold period people like the music especially the bands that have you know long careers you can you can have a flash in the pan. You can have what happened. What was the band who they weren't even a band? The 
the thing back in the 90s where they were surf sharks. No, that was it. The well, I can't remember the two guys who would um, who lip sync. Oh, Vanilli. Millie Vanilli. Yeah, you can have like a flash in the pan where somebody sold a you know a, a, a song or two, but you're not going to have a 40 or 50 long career with you know multiple albums if you you can't play or sing. That that's not that doesn't happen. Well, and I said to Paul once too. I said, do you realize how many of us are like? in the middle of some kind of problem and where we the first one of the first things we think is hmm i wonder what paula jean would do <laughs> well we ask ourselves that question all the time when we're marketing this show to you guys no oh, please all the time uh, you know the come kiss, on the kiss school of marketing and, and you guys should get this you know because you're kiss fans i, I thought I, it was brilliant I, I grew up on kiss and professional wrestling Two of They're the two of the two of the biggest mystiques, fake fronts, whatever you want to call it, fantasies. That was a huge influence on me without really knowing it. Well, trappings are fun, and what I mean by that is, you know, the, the, speaking for me, Cheap Trick. I love the image. You know what I mean? Alice Cooper. I love the image. Ted Nugent. I love the wild man image. All that's. It's, Again, and, and, and you have to Google this. If every one of those performers I just talked about looked like the bass player in the you know uh, Atlanta rhythm section, I hate to pick on the guy because he's deceased, but he was a very unattractive large man. If Robert Plant looked like him, they would have had a hard. Even if the music would have sounded exactly like Led Zeppelin, you would have had an image problem. That people do to do gravitate toward an image. The Beatles were the Beatles for a reason. Same thing yeah. with the Who, and, and, and you go all the way on down. There's a reason that the Kinks dressed the way they did and moved the way they did. The Wonders. <laughs> the Own Eaters. The Own Eaters. eaters. <laughs> so, yeah. You're, well, you're going to get suits again, for nice you know, boys. There's, there's, nice suits for nice boys. There's Exactly. Smile all the time. Smile, smile. Smiling, smiling. Yeah. Guys, that, that movie, if you, if you haven't seen that, uh, the Wonders, go, that is a dino. That, it's called That Thing You Do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. That Thing You Do. So, so just you ever, one, once again, people, my image, my mystique is I'm a tool and I'm an asshole. You get it? Mm-hmm. You get it? <laughs> yeah. Any, anyway, let's, um, let's show the Vinny video here real quick so you guys okay. can watch the video that we just talked about. And then we're going to come back after the video. And we've got something else cool that we're going to talk about. He sold millions of records, played to sold out stadiums around the world, signed multi million dollar record deals, and then in 1996, he disappeared. Until now. Vinnie Vincent, live at the Atlanta Kiss Expo, Saturday, January 20th, 2018. Signing autographs, taking photos, and answering the question everybody wants to know. Did Vinnie Vincent save Kiss? You're damn right I did! Um, all right, so guys, on to the next little topic here. And we kind of we kind of teased you about this last week. Mark did, and this week Tommy got his, and I got mine this week. And I can't believe how cheap it is. Meaning cost wise. Oh, I know. This, I was this, just. This this book, this is Lynn Goldsmith's Kiss, 1977 to 1980. Um, and she's going to be on the show. I think it's next week we record with her. Yeah. This book is quality, 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 hardcover, glossy photos. I didn't even look to see how many pages it is. Let me see. If and I, I scanned for, Mark Mac, uh, for McFarlane action figures and didn't see any. There's no page. There's <laughs> no page numbers in here, but and it's the same. It was the same price as that other book. At, at on Amazon right now, I think I looked. This book is like 
thirty bucks, thirty five dollars. Thirty five dollars, and then shipping is probably twenty because it's heavy, it's big. It's, it's, it's a heavy, big book. But anyway, so you know, Mark teased it last week. I don't know if you've opened it, Mark. And I don't know. I if you, did. did you guys see? I'll... Look, I got my book, but oh my god, there's a little <coughs> ding in it. It's got to hurt. Anyway. Um, I created a video that I posted last week of me opening this package for the first time, pulling the shrink wrap off, awesome. paging through the book, and we're going to play that for you here in a, in a moment so you guys can see it. Um, but, wow. 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 You guys... Anyone that is a Kiss fan that doesn't buy this book is crazy. This Especially is at 35 bucks. I mean, how can you go wrong? Can't go wrong. I tell you what, this is one of those things. Pre order it. Go to your wife or your significant other who, or someone you know is buying you a Christmas present. Go, look, this is something I want bad and it won't break the bank. 35, you, 35 bucks. Yeah. yeah. This book is so worth it. And the text in there is great, too. If it, I love the little stories. There's so much in there. It's stories awesome. are from Gene and Paul. Gene and Paul mm -hmm. contributed the stories and little memories. And I haven't read through the whole book yet, and I haven't oh. looked at all the pictures. Basically, what I did in the upcoming videos, what I've seen of the book. But, again, the quality of this book is top-notch. It is everything you would hope that it would be and more, really. And you get to see outtakes of photos from some of these iconic studio sessions. So, and I, I love how playful she was at times with, with the guys in the band, too. Some of them, she's in the shots telling them, you know, how to stand and, you know, making goofy faces with them. And it, it's just... You could just tell what a labor of love. And you, you, you can really tell. Number one, Lynn is one of the top echelon photographers of all time. Yeah. But this book also humanizes her and Kiss through her photography. Because you, because you can tell they liked working for her. They were you know, mugging for her. And you know what I could... You, you, I've read the thing cover to cover because uh, that's, that's what, what I you do. do. Yes. I loved the story, and I'm not going to... Because you have to buy the book. Yeah. Well, and I loved the part where she was talking about how hard it was for Eric Carr to get comfortable for photo shoots because these weren't photo shoots like someone like me or something. I'm in a band and, you know, I stand there, I get my picture taken behind my kit. One of the things Eric asked was how, how come we're not like, how come I'm not holding drumsticks or how come we're not holding our guitars? And they're like, Eric, you're now the Fox. You have to be your character. Right. Yeah, and and that took them a while, and you can really see. To be honest, I, I don't think Eric, and, and this is just this, the fan in me talking. I don't think Eric ever really got comfortable with photo shoots till they were out of makeup. And if you think about it, think of some of the poses. Go back in the earliest pictures of him in makeup and forward through the makeup years. And we're only a few years, but poses didn't change much. It wasn't until he was out of makeup where he looked a little bit more natural. Well, That's my own opinion, but let let let's be real. I mean, the makeup, and this is probably true um, for Vinny as well. The makeup wasn't natural for them, them mm. as in Eric and Vinny, because the they were thrown the, into the, it. The makeup was given to them, and a character was given to them. Where Gene, Paul, Ace, and Peter. As we know in history, they created it. It was born out of them. They lived and breathed it. It It is who they were. So it was natural for them to act like those characters as opposed to Eric, who one day said, okay, you're going to be a fox. Now act like a fox. Well, wait a second. I've never been a fox my entire life. Gene has always been a demon. He grew up horror movies and comic books and Tommy uh, uh, Paul's always been the rock star so you know you kind of get what I'm saying that that I, I can understand why it was not comfortable or natural for maybe Vinny and Eric because it was just like well here put on this new suit right but, but Vinny I'll tell you the difference though with with Vinny Vinny was more of an extrovert because I've got clips and they're you easily find them online there's a couple times, especially in the Sao Paulo 
I think it's so Craig, some some Kiss fans going to correct me. Keep in mind, guys, we do this live. I don't have time to go back and look at every date. But it's one of the last dates with makeup. And Vinny keeps wanting to speak and Paul won't let him. Paul wants, you know, because, hey, they, as it was, he's the boss, you know. But there was times you never really saw Eric trying to take the forefront with interviews. There's quite a few where Vinny tried to be a little bit more assertive. Whereas, and this goes back to the photo thing, even looking back at, at photos of them staged, and there weren't a ton with, with Vinny, but Vinny was more of a natural with trying to do the hand things and to be, you know, trying to get in more to the character where, you know, let's face it, Eric was. Well, do, was, do, I uh, mean, do you think that's somewhat brought on by the instruments they play? Meaning Vinny's a lead guitarist. Lead guitarists are at times out there up front in front of everybody you know put on a spectacle putting on a show bringing the crowd in where the drummer let's be honest drummers are always hidden in the back they're always behind so they're all they're always they're they're just naturally going to be sitting behind and there's something to that michael i agree I'm not saying it's a hundred percent, but there certainly is a large and and, and as we know how Vinny's role played out with Kiss, that didn't gel with Gene and Paul. Vinny wanting to go out front and step in front of Gene and Paul and That's get the spotlight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think their personalities. Vinny, I never, and I remember this as a kid, and you know, as, as a seventeen-year-old in 1982. Just the, Eric just didn't have the, I guess, Vinny kind of jumped out at you more than, and, and don't worry, guys, I love Eric Carr. I, I love that era of the band. But, you know, even if you look back at the photos now, Vinny seemed to have a little bit more, I don't know what you'd even call it. Charisma. Uh, yeah, charisma. He had a little bit more of that than Eric did. And, um, you know, what's funny, I, I think some of that, shyness played out later on in the thing is as you guys if you've ever read paul's book where paul's just like for a year and a half they didn't talk i mean eric just sucked into himself well you know work. that that's true and and on Vinny's side that played out in him saying i'm not dealing with kiss i'm starting my own band with Correct. my own yeah. name i yeah. want to be in the spotlight and i think the photographs suggest both of those sorts of behaviors and traits that's all yeah uh, I'm not saying it's good bad or indifferent i'm just saying certainly one of them was more of an extrovert and one of them was more of an introvert and there's nothing wrong with it no it's just yeah you know it's funny you look at a band like rush is a great example where the drummer is such a visual part and such a focal point of the band but who's the guy who doesn't give interviews and right. doesn't neil didn't want nothing to do with it my favorite quote from Neil Pert, and it's something that I've used because I've coached hockey and coached sports my whole life. I always loved his attitude. He said, I didn't go looking for fame. I just wanted to be the best there was. Fame found me. And I always love that attitude in life in general. Go do the best you can. And if you go do the best you can, recognition is going to find you. It, it just That just happens. I, I always just thought that was a great quote. And it's funny because... That's also, I, I think, something that we were talking about marketing earlier. There's not, you know, nothing beats hard work. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can, the marketing and stuff is is uh, is just the cream, you know, rising to the top or the cherry on the top. The the hard work has to be put in. The talent has to be put the hard, in. The hard work is what will keep you there in the long run. The marketing is just going to give you spikes of attention. Correct. That's. I guess that's a, a great way to say it. But. Um. So anyway, so let's roll <coughs> the video of um opening up and flipping through Lynn Goldsmith's book, Kiss, nineteen seventy seven to nineteen eighty. It'll give you guys a little sneak peek of what her book is. Again, there's three thumbs up here from us. You go order this book. Six. Six thumbs up. Well, okay. Six, six. thumbs up. There we go. It, it is. It's amazing. And you're just going to have to wait now for another week or so till we have her on. Yeah, so we she'll can ask she'll, her all she'll the be on next week. So that means in two weeks it'll finally air our interview with Lynn. But watch the video and then we're going to come back and we'll introduce our special guest. 
let's do a little video opening up this package which I'm not 100% sure what it is but I have a strong suspicion I know so let's cut this open and see what's in this FedEx package just arrived <gasps> oh look at this Yes, 1977 to 1980 by Lynn Goldsmith. I want to rock and roll all night and party every day. Now, the question is, do I keep the shrink wrap on and open it on the show in front of Mark or... Like most KISS fans, you want to see this right now. So you know what I'm going to do? Let's pull the shrink wrap off. Let's see what this book looks like. This is like a little obi strip from Japan. Oh, the book is gorgeous, hardcover. It's kind of a, I don't know how you would describe it, a little bit of a cushioned cover. It's a little soft to it. Inside. And FYI, we are going to have Lynn on three sides of the coin in a few weeks to talk about her book. 1977, 1980. Photographs by Lynn Goldsmith. Words by Lynn Goldsmith, Gene Simmons, and Paul Stanley. Rizzoli Press, New York, Paris, London, Milan. I'm not going to go through the whole book, but we'll do a little bit. To Gene and Paul, who created a fully imagined world with its own rituals and rules. More interested in love than despair, wonder than cynic, cynic, cynicism, curiosity than normality, illusion than realism. Their bond was a, con a conspiracy whereby my photographs would be used as evidence of a rock and roll band who would be an antidote for the emptiness of existence. Gene with Lynn. Paul with Lynn. A little bit of a forward. In the beginning, it was all for one and one for all. And these are, and I'm just going to... Flip through real quick. Many of the photos that are in here. Little captions. Boy, this is a beautiful quality book. Beautiful quality. All right, so there you go. I opened it up. Oh, goodness, there's a little dent in my book. There you go. Lynn's going to be on the show. Make sure you head over to Amazon.com. Just search for Lynn Goldsmith, Kiss, 1977-1980. Pre-order this book now. You are going to want it. I guarantee it. Mark, did that did that hurt to watch oh. the shrink wrap come off? Why do you open things? Well, but so wait a second. How did you look at the book if you didn't take the shrink wrap off? I'm buying another one. Yeah, I, actually, so yeah, am I. Yeah. I pre-ordered one. Me too. <laughs> along when it first became available, so as the, did I. The, the pre-ordered one I will leave in shrink wrap in honor of Mark. Yes. Or I may just yeah. open the second one just to bug him. There you go. Because that won't bug him though, because it's like it's not the same. Like I said, I'm going to bid on some of his stuff when he finally sells Wait, it. I'm going to mail him something with a stamp. Speaking of not the same. We've got no, January, January 1st. 
Oh. I didn't sit. I didn't sit. <laughs> Knock Ouch. it off. Just pull it off like a Band-Aid. <laughs> Especially if he didn't have one of those. Well, I had one. No, I, you didn't, I got, though. I got 365 of these. So we can have so much fun with this. Yeah. I'm ruining it. Hey, Mark. I'm not looking. Listen. Listen. I don't... Oh, oh. oh Jesus! Oh. I ripped the tongue in half. Oh no, that's even worse. Because at least you had an opportunity to glue it back on. Oh, look at him squirm! I will destroy kiss and dice forever just for the sheer thrill of this. <laughs> I know. Look, his palms are getting wet. <laughs> He's no. just like. <laughs> I need to bring in some of my duplicate Kiss vinyl and smash it on the show. (laughs) Why? (laughs) For the sheer entertainment value. I remember, remember, I'm the fucking heel. This is what I do. We need to find like an originals first pressing that's still sealed and open it. Something like that. Again, the, the, the offers out there to any of our listeners, if you've got something that you want us to like, Rip open, destroy, or break in front so of Mark on the show. Ripped open, send, send it, to, it me. to me, and then it won't be. It'll be treated. No, 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 no. I got yes, a great yes, idea yes, for yes. homework. Make a video of yourself. No. Oh, I'm not opening something. <laughs> yes, and we will put it on the show. If we get so many videos, we'll just do a show of nothing but back to back destroying stuff. kids' merchandise. <laughs> God, I love, I love day. this. I love this. None of the, none of this is ever planned out. No, but the, what a great idea! Let's do that. If you guys open something rare and you videotape Why yourself doing you it, put it on the show. Stupid for your reaction. For just to watch you, it's worth it, man. <laughs> well, look at the time. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. So. As we said, go pre-order Lynn's book. You're going to love it. This week, we've got a special guest. We hinted about this last week. Um, We are joined, we, Tommy, we explained earlier why it'll just be Tommy, is joined by somebody from Rhino Records who is releasing Gene Simmons' The Vault Experience. (coughs) His box set. Keith Valcourt from Rhino Records sits down with Tommy and answers a lot of great questions that Tommy has. I think these are questions that a lot of fans have about the box set. Yeah. We're just trying to clear everything up and give you guys all the latest information so you can help to make a decision whether you want to purchase uh, a, a vault experience or or you want Gene, Uncle Gene to come to your house. You know, whatever you guys so, are so thinking about. What I, just let this roll. Listen to it. It's about 50 minutes with Keith talking about the behind the scenes of how how the vault came to be some great stories definitely that i that that aren't anywhere else um and then we'll come back afterwards so keith from rhino records roll it all right everybody welcome back to another edition of three sides and today we have a very special guest with us which is mr keith valcourt of rhino how are you how are you guys doing? We are doing very well, and it's just the two of us right now. And the reason being is, is because, as many of you listeners know, Skype is a nightmare, and we are having production problems. We have Keith, who is being generous with his time right now to go over all of this. So it's going to be the two of us today. So hopefully we catch everything uh, that you guys want to know about the box set. But I want to start out with the history of you, meaning tell me how you ended up at Rhino. It's been a, it's a wonderful company. I love what you guys have done with like the monkeys box sets and their reissues and all these other things that you guys work on. How did you land here? Well, I worked, you know, 20 some odd years ago, I worked at Capitol Records and artist development for a, a good run of about 10 years. Okay. And then I left and moved to Los Angeles to pursue my acting career. Oh. You, uh, you may have seen me in dozens of canceled sitcoms as the guy who says one thing and walks out of the room. <laughs> yep. Hey, that's cool. Uh, wow. Yeah, so I did that for a bunch of years and, and I um, was doing stand up and I ended up writing for a magazine company which ran for eight years and then ended up working for the Washington Times doing celebrity interviews. Wow. My friend Dave Cap, who's worked at Rhino for almost 25 years, 
uh, would come along as my photographer to all these different interviews. And I mentioned to him, look, you know, this is great, the acting and everything, but I, if there's ever a chance to get back into the music business, especially at Rhino, I would be interested. So, he, you know, he mentioned it to Mark Pincus, who's the president of Rhino, and I, I've gone to different events with them and, and hung out and so forth. And there was always a conversation, look, if there's ever anything that we think fits you, we'll be in touch. Flash forward last October or November, Dave happened to walk into Mark's office, and Mark is very much into the Grateful Dead and Linda Ronstadt and that sort of, and on his couch, for no apparent reason, was a Gene Simmons figure pillow. And Dave said to Mark, what's with that? Because it didn't, it kind of clashed with all the Grateful Dead stuff. And Mark said to Dave, oh, we met with Gene Simmons. He's got this, idea, this big idea for this giant box set. And, and he stopped and he turned to Dave and goes, does Keith Falcourt still need a job? And it Perfect. literally happened like that. Dave called me that day. I was on the set of Odd Couple. We were wrapping season three. I was working with Thomas Lennon. And Dave called me that day and said, are, you know, are, you still good for, are you interested? I said, of course. He goes, okay, let me ask you a question. He goes, are you a fan of Kiss? And, and I can tell you that's the story behind that. And I, and I was, you know, of course. And, it can, and, and I met with Mark the next day. And probably four or five days later, Mark and Brian Hay, who was the project lead on this, took me to Gene Simmons' house, and I met with Gene for the first time. We hit it off. We all talked about what this project was going to be, what it was going to entail, and it just went from there. So that was last November. Okay, and and for those of you that are listening that don't know, Rhino is, at least in my mind, the king of companies for box sets and reissues and they are very eclectic at times and do these types of very specialized releases for a myriad of artists it's not just the 60s they do everything so to me when i first heard that the gene simmons box set was going to be released through rhino i'm like okay that's a perfect fit because i know it'll be right. cool you know, and it'll be be quality. But how did it? How did Gene end up at Rhino versus having Universal release it or any other independent label? So I guess Gene, Gene has had this box set in his mind, or form of this box set in his mind for several years, and Universal, for one reason or another, was not interested in putting it out. It was too big of a project. They were, you know, they're they're more they when they do the reissues, they're used to packaging things a certain way. Gene had met with Craig Kalman, who runs Atlantic Records, and said, hey, Craig, I've got this idea for a box set, you know, and Craig Kalman said, you know what, you should go to Rhino. You should, Rhino does, you know, Rhino's the kings of doing box sets. They're yeah. the box set company. They, you know, everyone from David Bowie to the Grateful Dead to the Eagles, they know how to put the box sets together. You should go to Rhino. So Craig Kalman actually connected Gene to Mark Pincus, and that's how the Rhino connection came together. And is it also partly because it's not really a KISS project, it's a Gene Simmons project, so therefore Universal can allow him to go do what he wants to do elsewhere because it's a side thing? Exactly. It's, you know, there are some, there are early demos that became KISS classics that yeah. are in the box set, but it's not a KISS box set. That's one of the things we have to, you know, tell everyone. It's a Gene Simmons, it's 50 years of Gene Simmons solo recordings in a box set. So it was, I guess it was easier for, I, I wasn't obviously part of that conversation, yeah. but I guess it was easy from that to Universal to say to Gene, oh yeah, just go and, you know, go ahead and do this. It's okay, because it's not a KISS box set. Okay, so tell us when you first went to Gene's house, can you share some of what that meeting was about? He had a very clear vision for the, the feel of the box set, but it wasn't initially a safe. Okay. It wasn't actually called the vault. Initially, he wanted it to be sort of a briefcase, uh, a Halliburton, you know, kind of metal hard sided case. And we, we, we looked at it and we said, it seems a little too, it's not rock and roll enough. Mm. So it's, he had a vision for what he, he wanted this box set to come out. He knew that it was going to be 150 songs. He knew it was going to include cool stuff. The cool stuff had yet to be defined. But we kind of, we were able to sit with him. I don't know if it was that meeting or the next meeting and really kind of, we pitched him ideas. It was going to be a doctor bag at one point, you know, calling Dr. Love. Yeah. He was going to hand okay. deliver it nice old-fashioned leather we you know that kind of evolved and then one of the meetings he just stopped in the middle he took a piece of paper took a sharpie as he tends to do and scribbled down a picture and said how about this and it was a safe and i and i you know i said I, that makes sense gene because all these songs are from your vault and it just kind of went from there and it evolved and it became the vault okay uh, he knew early on though that the you know the key to this 
He knew he what didn't want it in stores. He didn't want a digital element. He didn't want streaming or anything. He knew that he wanted to make it special because he wanted to actually hand deliver it to everybody. That was that was something that was in the forefront of his mind from the very very beginning. So when you guys started and you got involved in this project, did you help with the choice of the songs that are going to end up on the box set? And when you have all of these demos, however many thousands or hundreds that he has, how do you even start a project like that? I mean, I'm assuming you cherry pick certain things that you know for sure are going to be on there. So you shove that 20% or whatever it is to the side. But then how do you start going through? Do you, do you determine it by age and sound quality? Or do you try to keep it as varied as possible? How do you start that process? He, he had he had already done some of that groundwork before we even started. Uh, a young man named Eric Lenning, who's an uh, audio engineer, had gone through these audio cassettes. And some of them were. They were two-track cassettes. Some of them were old reel-to-reel. And they'd started going through and cherry-picking the stuff. And I think the initial pass was what sounded good. He, okay. You know, there was, there was some stuff. There was, a, there was a bunch of high quality as far as sound quality and then the historically important stuff. There was stuff on, you know, that maybe didn't sound as good in, in, in first transfer, but it was really important because of who played on it and so forth. So he had done a lot of that groundwork ahead of time with Eric when we stepped in before we went to mastering at Capitol, where he had about, I, I want to say close to 180 songs that he had in mind. And as we went through them, some of them were, you know, version two, version three of, of a song. And as we went through them, we started to decide what, you know, what were better quality, which were historically important. And we kind of whittled it down to the songs that would actually make it on the box set. And some of the, unfortunately, some of the source tapes had been, they weren't kept very well. He had to bake a lot of the tapes. You know, you take the reel to reels and you bake them. Some of them were just so damaged that he tried to, first play on the reel to reel and just came apart and they're gone forever there's there was just that history is gone um so it was a matter of finding you know what what we could actually work with and then picking the best of that so did he store most of these demos and tapes in one of the kiss warehouses or did he have it did he have them at his house where did he where did where does someone keep all of this stuff it, 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 it was it was mostly it was pretty random the, you know in his office he has the old-fashioned cassette wall where you used to put cassettes in the wooden yeah. folder so there were hundreds of cassettes in there that have sat there in direct sunlight for god knows how long uh in the basement he had he had boxes of tapes the kiss warehouse there wasn't so much as far as audio there there's another element to the box set which we'll get into later we okay. pulled everything from the kiss warehouse but most it was mostly in his home in his home whether in the attic or in the basement or in his actual office um and again he keeps everything but not with the greatest care so you would right. you, you would open up a banker box and there would be old papers and stuff and then you'd find two or three cassettes that were you know saw one of the songs he did with joe Perry, a song he did with joe perry it was just sitting there in the bottom of the banker box in the cassette and you you know you, you know what's this oh a song i did with joe perry okay you know, you know like, there was no yeah. there was no rhyme or reason no organization to it it was just it was all kept and was all saved but it wasn't necessarily organized okay so then before we move on with any more of the box set questions the next thing I want to know, because I know a lot of people listening will wonder, mm -hmm. is when you went to Gene's house for the first time and you went into his office with all of the merchandise, can you tell people what that's like? It, I mean, as a KISS fan, it's like walking into Willy Wonka's chocolate, fa chocolate factory. I mean, you just, you just, you're overwhelmed. You know, when you walk in, every single person, I've been there now close to 70 times, and I brought several people. And every time you go in there, everyone has the same reaction. You stop. You look left, you look right, you go, wow. Because it's you can't believe, first of all, you can't believe that this character, this this individual who you're talking to, is the guy who was your hero as a kid. Right. He's the kid you dressed up as Hall on Halloween. He's the guy you, you know, looked up to because he was cooler than anybody you can imagine in rock and roll. And then you look at just the, the overwhelming amount of stuff. And, you know, you, you vacillate between, I wish I had that, to I had that, to that really exists and it's just i mean it's really like it's like walking into a into a into the candy factory that's the only way you can describe it what was the coolest thing that you saw you've seen there oh, i know there's probably a ton but just if you had to pick one thing out what was the one thing that you were just like wow in 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 one of the cabinets around the corner and i probably didn't see this till two or three dozen visits in he has the original spider bot and the original gun from runaway Oh, the props that were used yeah. in the movie. 
Oh, I mean, cool. you know, other than the pinball machines, yeah. which are super cool, and the Megos, the, you know, the dolls from the set. But that was just an odd, odd thing to find and to see one day. And I, and it, it was actually screen war used props from Runaway. That's very cool. Now I know Gene because I've I've met him several times. He's always been very nice to me, and we just did a, a show here this week about our experience with the whole matter benefit and CHS and everything. But I don't know him. He's an acquaintance, but he's always been very nice to me, but he's very direct and he's very purposeful and he's very business oriented. So how is your relationship working for him? What's that like? You know, he's he's very respectful of people if he respects you and if you work hard. It's it's been fairly good, fairly easy. You know, and, and one of the things that the side of the personality of the people I'm talking about is he's very funny. And he's very kind to people. When, whenever you, I, I tell people the story, whenever you leave his house, when you bring people to his house, he suddenly transforms from the di- businessman as you're standing in the hall between the office and the door, there's all the different merchandise that just came in, whether it's new t-shirts. And he turns into your kindly old Jewish grandfather and he goes, would you like some tchotchkes? And he loads people <laughs> up with stuff to take with him, hats and cola and whatever else just came in. And you know, he loves the fact that you're enthusiastic and excited about what what he does because he's enthusiastic and excited about it, what he does. And, you know, from a business standpoint, they're, they're fairly easy to work with. Um, you know, he's a perfectionist. you yes. got to get it right. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, You know, you, you can't be offended by the fact that something might go through four, five, 16 iterations yep. because at the end of it, usually when you look at it, you go, damned if he wasn't right. right. You know, from the first one to the 16th one. And he's you know, got... The, the, the vault took... I mean, there's a, there's a stack of vaults outside of my office the, the vault graveyard where we went through easily 12 different vaults before we got to the first one that was was close to right. And and I suppose, you know, in that perfection, though, he just wants to do the very best. And that's what your job is to help him realize that vision that he's got. Right. So then yeah. back to the vault piece of it. Before we go into the music and some of the other things that are in there, I want to talk about the physical vault as well. Because now, Keith was kind enough when we were in Minneapolis for that matter benefit, uh, the gala and stuff. I got a chance to meet Keith and we talked for a while. And he showed me all of this stuff. So I know what it feels like, what it looks like. How, did you, how do you as a company, when you have a vision, for instance, because this is an odd thing, building a vault like this to release for anything is... You're making it out of thin air. Who do you go to to physically make what's sitting right behind you? It, it's it's funny because it started, uh, we were initially, we needed to create a prototype and we needed to turn it around very quickly. So it actually started with a prop maker, uh, a gentleman I know named Kenny D. Martinez, who made it out of foam cord. The very first vault oh. was made out of foam cord. In some of the videos on GeneSimmonsVault.com, you see this silvery vault behind him. Yeah. That's actually made out of foam cord. Oh, it, interesting. It weighed about four pounds. You could literally pick it up with a finger, but it kind of it, it it took a vision and turned it into something that everyone can look at and go, "Oh, that's what you're talking about." You could physically see. So then, from the foam core, we had a gentleman uh, named Dennis Kiggins who worked as a designer for us, and he turned it into into metal and wood and everything else, and he started putting it together and really making it real, so that you know, again, you can't describe something as well with words as you can with physically rolling something in and go this is what it looks like yes and dennis was instrumental in helping us create it and then from there it was a matter of finding the right partner the right company who could create who could actually turn it into a reality and make more than one they could make as many as we need to make and we found a company called promo shop based out of los angeles and they partnered with a woman named marie and she was able to physically take Dennis's ideas and designs and mold them into a functional vault that did everything that we wanted it to do and looked as cool as it does. Okay, so can you share a little bit with us before we talk about what's in it and the music and all that, what does this vault do? Does it actually lock? Do you need a code? No. So, so the, so the, re, I don't know how much, you, how well you can see it, but so the reality is we initially wanted the vault to be able to lock. When we did, the vault weighs 38 pounds full with the book and everything in it. When we researched actually putting working mechanics inside the door to make it lock, it would have added another close to 50 pounds. 
So yeah. we couldn't sell a box set that weighed almost 90 pounds based on the fact that we were pretty sure that someone would pick it up, hurt their back, and that would and, and we'd be in a legal situation. Right. Uh, you know, plus it also added a cost to the vault. You know, it, the, the vault itself to produce is not cheap. This is not cardboard. It's yeah. not paper. It's, it's wood. It's metal. It's got these really heavy wheels. You can physically, as you saw in Minnesota, you can roll it down the street. It's not going to fall over. It's not going to fall apart. Yeah. So, no, it, it doesn't have a combo. It has a spinning lock, but it does not actually have a combination. And what you do is you have the, the, the handle, and then you pull it through, and it has a series of magnets so that you can get it, you can open it up and you can get inside. On the side, there are two handles, um, a la like a road case. Yes. So you can physically pick it up and carry it. Um, and it's, yeah, I mean, it's a real, it's a solid, one of the things that Gene had for the vision for the vault was to, it would be a piece of furniture. It wouldn't just be something that would just uh, let's sit over in a corner. It's going to be something that's a focal point when you walk in the room. Again, the wow factor. Yes. What is that? What's inside that? And that's that's kind of how we, we got it together. These rivets are metal, and you know we got it to, to, to look like a piece of furniture, look like a real safe. Well, and I can attest to that because I physically have looked at it, opened it, held it, touched it, it is really a quality, quality item. So, I mean, if that tells you anything about what you're getting for the money you're spending, they're off to the right track. Um, right. That's what we want. We want people to, to, to know that because, you know, traditionally box sets are cardboard or, or plastic or whatever. Mm -hmm. And there are some box sets that are amazing looking, but there's never been anything, you know, with no. this kind of weight and heft to it and, and solid to it. It's not something that, you know, it's going to decompose in, in a landfill at any point. This is, this is going to be around for a long time. Well, yeah, and I was very surprised because I was not expecting to see it. And they brought it in for the gala that night because Gene was talking about it because it had something to do with one of the charity things that were being auctioned. So that's why I took the chance to go over it and that's how we met. And and it's funny because Keith's like, oh yeah, we're I'm coming on your show next week. I'm like, oh yeah, because we we didn't know each other at the time. Right. Uh, right. But yeah, and, and and thank you so much for being so kind to let me take a couple of pictures. Sweet. We've shared that last this past Great. week uh, of some of the items. So I don't want to give everything away because at the same time I also want someone I would think that would they'd want to be surprised by some of what's in there. You well, know. The, you know, it's it, it, the website Gene Simmons Vault tells you kind of gives you kind of a thing. So there's not a lot of there, the surprise aspect is, if I may, is that you know we we have a section in the vault which has a surprise item from Gene, and I referenced earlier being in the kids' storage space. Gene wanted it to be that every single vault has something unique and individual, based on the Cracker Jacks theories. You know, he loves Cracker Jacks when he was a kid. Yeah. You would buy it not for the popcorn, but you would buy it because it had a prize in it. You never know what you're going to get. So, it's same theory goes with the vault. In each of these, you can have different different items. And just here, if I could just randomly show yeah. these are literally random. So, I mean, the, for instance, here's an all-access pass from 2011 that was a crew pass. You, you could never buy it. It's in one of the vaults. Here's a painting someone did years and years and years ago. It's in the vault. Here's – this is the, the original press kit from Dynasty in uh, – that, you know, that, again, it's a bill of, it's a coin. It's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's actually is, vintage press kit. But you know, again, things you can't buy are in the vault as a surprise item, and and you know, gloves that he's worn in some of the videos, and sunglasses, and just we went through the Kiss space. I don't know if you know the TV show American Pickers. Yes. But it was a, a lot like that. It was Gene what and I going through the boxes. And we went through every single box, and it, there was nothing that was spared. There's some watches in here that I looked at him, and I said, oh, you probably want to keep this. He's like, no, put it in the vault. I want to surprise people. I want people to, you know, it, it, he wants to give it. It's all about the fans, as you well yeah. know. And he wants them to open it up and go, okay, cool. I know I knew there's a coin in there, and I know mm -hmm. there's CDs and a book, and I know this guy is lurking in there. But I didn't know I was going to get, you know, a pair of leather gloves that he wore on stage or I was going to get, you know, a guitar strap that he wore in 1979. You'd think yeah. like that. You had no idea. So that, that's the surprise aspect of it. You're going to make Jakini crazy because this is going to make him nuts because now he's going to want to buy every box set out there so he can get everything. See what, to see what he can yeah, get. Exactly. exactly. Good luck with that. So, all right. So moving forward then, now let's move on to the book and the, and the sure. music. What I'd like to know first – and also, too, I'm working off the preface here that a lot of people who may be listening to this and watching this haven't been visiting uh, 
the vault website so they may not know this so i'm just going with assuming no one knows a lot of this right have you or will you be releasing a set list or a track listing sometime yes. here in the near future uh, at genesimmonsvault.com in the near future we will be uh, in in the upcoming weeks releasing disc by disc the track listings we will be letting people know what's on it and we're planning on getting together with Gene and filming some videos where he tells some of the stories behind some of the tracks okay. to give even further insight into it. And when will this actually be physically available? When will be the first one that someone can get their hands on? So, you know, the thing about the vault is the, the experience is part of it. Yes. So December 31st is the very first vault. Starting in January, starting every weekend in January, running through all of 2018, that's when Gene will be going to these cities and handing, hand delivering the vaults to people. So the physical vault will not be available basically until January, December 31st, vault number one. Okay. And then starting the first weekend in January, uh, the vaults will start unrolling from there. All right. So it's 10 CDs, 150 Correct. songs. And it comes with this beautiful, large book. Do you have that? You can show a little bit of that. So this is the book, uh, 50,000 words, track by track, Gene telling the stories that came, uh, that go behind the songs. The CDs are actually housed in the book. We have these individual div divider pages, mm -hmm. photos from his archives, a lot of stuff that, you know, exclusive photos that have never seen the light of day or uh, alternative takes on photos that you've seen, you know, you, you know an iconic photo, but there's one where there's something different going on. And this is and, a mix of thin pages and as well as like these correct. cardboard pages where the the CDs are housed. Exactly. These are, they're, you know, it's, it's high quality paper, it's thin pages, and then in, in, in every uh, chapter, if you will, that's where you have the cardboard page. There's a little, oh, there's a track list. And then you have, behind it, you have the actual CD. Uh, and it houses all of them and it yeah and it's just it's 50 years of music it's from 1966 to 2016 it spans the gamut there's some pictures of this from, that's from uh, earlier this year him and ace in yeah. uh, beverly hills when they got together um and it spans it's a full it spans a full gamut of his career and musically it's kind of all over the place if you want to know how deep you want to get into the, the music side of things well what i'd like to know is he's mentioned a few things that are going to be on it all the way from his teenage years through almost current i know that you guys are going to release the songs with the van halen brothers can Correct. you there give us one surprise one song that is going to be on there that people may not know about yet well there's a song and they may have known about it i'm not sure he mentioned it and there's a song with joe perry called Mongoloid Man from the 70s okay. that's in here. There's uh, There are three songs with the Van Halen brothers that um, he, the original version of Christine 16 with just him and Alex and Ed playing as a trio and uh, original version of Tunnel of Love also, and plus another oh, one. Okay. Um, there are, Paul is on, you know, the, the thing is all, almost all the Kiss guys are also on track. Uh, there's a version of In Your Face that he did the original demo with, and f soon following that is In Your Face with Ace, where Ace rewrote the lyrics and sings lead on. Oh, uh, Paul's, okay. Paul's on a track, Tommy Thayer's on a bunch of tracks, Eric Singer's on a bunch of tracks, Eric Carr's on a bunch of tracks, uh, Vinnie Vincent is on one track. Wow, um, see, there you go. Now see, that's something yeah. that people probably didn't know. There so you go. Sounds like he is running the gamut, and you guys are gonna get you know quite the experience yeah and you do and you get the songs i mean you get his very first song he wrote as a teenager called my uncle is a raft which is you know you you if you ever heard it out of context you would be like that's not anybody i know that's not gene simmons right and then you get some songs that he was working on last year um and yeah it does it totally runs again it's you know it's him showing his legacy away from the band everybody knows kiss and they know but this is like hey this is also what I do. This is my legacy. I, you know, I want to share it with you guys. I want you to, to see everything. Right, so, right. And uh, so then on top of it, you get the coin. You also get the 12-inch uh, action figure. That's right. You Correct. Get, you get yeah. the first ever non-makeup Gene Simmons action figure. And, and I, by the way, I was. It, it's it's a hard plastic. It doesn't move. But right. the um, quality of the artwork is amazing it really is i mean take a look at it i was just like wow this really looks like him because sometimes you get these action figures and it doesn't necessarily look like the person that right. looks like him 
Well, we with every aspect of this, we spent months making sure it was right. This is actually there's a company out of New York called Mezco that makes action figures, and we had four or five action figure companies bid on the job and come up with possibilities. Mezco really nailed it. I mean, you, you obviously you saw it in person when you touch the leather, mm -hmm. it feels like leather. When yeah. you touch the denim, it feels like denim. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, the detail is, is amazing. And, and I've actually, people came by my office, there were photos of this early on uh, of it in the hallway. And people came by and they said, oh, you didn't tell me Gene was here. I'd like to have met him. I, I met him, rather. I said, no, no, that's not Gene. It's a photo of the action figure standing in the hall. That's so fantastic. it does look, I mean, it looks real. And thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that's great. So it, yeah. It, I mean, even down to the boots, the, the just absolute attention to detail you know, went into every aspect of this, and and he, you know, he again, he's he wanted it to be for the fans perfect. He didn't want any of it to feel any of it to feel like it was rushed, any of it to feel like it wasn't. It was. It's all been well thought out and and well considered. Yeah, and it sure seemed like it from what I can see. So the next thing I want to talk about is, do you well, do you feel that you're se you're selling the experience as much as you are the music? almost more so because Gene seems to really have the experience part of this down. What can you share with how that developed? Like, okay, so now you have this box set, you got the songs, you know it's going to be a vault. Now how do you get it out to the people? Right. He didn't want, you know, again, he, he sees, he wanted to come up with something different. He knows traditional retail, as we all know. Remember, we also go. We always go to record stores, and how much we love that. They're not. They're dying or mm -hmm. they're gone. So he wanted to come up with a new way to present music, a new way to to make it feel like it had value. You know what I mean? And instead of just loading a bunch of tracks that people can download or whatever, he wanted people to feel like this is something special. And the experience aspect of it is a big part of the whole thing. It's it, it's getting to share it. As much for him as it is for the fans. It's funny because I think he almost gets a little bit more out of it than they do in the fact that he loves that interaction. So it's a chance to say, this is what I made. This is my career. And I only did this because you helped me make this. And I want to share it with you. I want to, I want to spend this time and you know get to meet you and have you see it and have you feel it in person and actually hand it to you. Um, so that, became, that was a very early on. That was a very important part is that you know this is not just a box set. This is not just a product. This is is an experience it's a it's a chance to be directly connected with the fans and bring the music in a way that no one's ever thought about doing and quite frankly i mean you look at personalities of most rock stars most rock stars couldn't do this they can't right. interact and do what he can do with the fans yes you know he has the ability to to walk into a room and and make it happen and make everyone feel special and spend that time and that's you know that's one of the most exciting aspects is the going around the world actually delivering it to the fans and seeing i was just with him in new york and Toronto doing press and you know the the reaction from the fans when when they see the vault and they see him and they and they're, they're, there's just this excitement there that you can't get by ordering something on Amazon and having it show up on your doorstep oh absolutely and one of the things that he's mentioned before which I'm sure he's discussed with you and I'm paraphrasing is that the music industry as a whole is dying because of downloading right so how do you guys when you're hand delivering these things over the course of a year to people all around the world now granted i understand they're buying the vault they're buying the music and they're buying the experience so it goes well beyond that but how do you control the downloading you don't i mean that's the unfortunate aspect of, our, of the music business you know 20 some odd years ago when i worked at capital i remember sitting in a meeting and someone asking that question of the president of capital records and the president of Capitol Records turned and said, oh, don't worry about it. People love going into record stores. Nothing will ever replace the joy they feel going into record stores. And that individual who run, uh, runs a chain called Newberry Comics looked at me and said, we are, and I don't know if I can swear on this podcast. Yes, of course you can. He, he said, we're fucked. Yeah. Because the attitude back then in the music business, when things could have been take, done, was uh, don't worry about it. It was kind of an ostrich head in the sand. So now we're at a point where... You, you, there's not much that can be done about it. We saw what Lars tried to do with Napster and how it backfired on him and, and Garth Brooks fighting used record stores. It's, it's Unfortunately, it's ingrained in the culture. The whole way that we're presenting this is there's a quality to it. And sure, right. you know, people are, are going to download music, people are going to steal music, yep. and that's just, there's no way to police it. There really is. Yeah, it's the nature of that's the beast. All. It is now, and, and again, 20 years ago, they could have stopped it, but they didn't. 
now so now we, you know what we just want to drive home with this project and I, is that this is quality you know yes. this is something it's something important to him it's not just another piece of music it's something it's a legacy he's sharing it with the you he wants you to hold it in value as much as he holds it in value and that's why he's not just you know putting it on spotify he wants people to have value of to it well yeah so and to, i think that's why that. and that's, that's why i think it's smart that you guys are doing pre-orders now Right. You know, so I mean, it's all designed a certain way. And since you were in the in the record business and still are, I want to ask your thought on that, because we've had this discussion many times about downloading. And one of the things that was brought up to us by one of our guests at one point, Danny Goldberg of mm -hmm. Universal, is he said that it actually wasn't the downloading that killed the record business. It was Microsoft's money and the creation of being able to record the CDs and do the file sharing that was really the bigger problem than the download itself. I think that I no, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that what killed the the record industry uh, at that point in time was the perception of value. What the consumers suddenly were, were being told, you have to buy this CD for sixteen dollars, and then they found a way to get it for free. And suddenly, you have a generation of people who've never paid for music and don't think of it as having any value. It was it was an attitude that that music is free and there's no intrinsic value value to it. And that's and and then you have a generation of people who think like that. Right. You know, I I know I I personally have about seventeen thousand CDs in my collection at home. Um, I know people who don't have any CDs in their house, who, right. who are younger millennials, and it's just that you you were raised to think that music is disposable. You were raised to think that music comes, you know, at the snap of a finger, and then and then you you know you, you like a song, not a band. There's no yep. there's no band. You know, you don't have the band loyalty that you had. That's why you know it's hard for a band nowadays to break out because even if they have great songs, it soon it goes away, and that's the end of it. You know, so I think the attitude that music was free is really what killed it. I don't know okay. if it's the fact that you could record it on CDs because let's be honest, growing up in the 70s, we, we all bought albums and we recorded them on cassettes for our friends right. and we gave cassettes to our friends. That didn't kill the music business. No. It was it was the overall shift in knowledge that you know, or, or the attitude that hey, this is free, I don't have to pay for this. Well, do you also think that if you could turn back time and you go back 20 some odd years, if the record industry as a whole would have embraced something like Napster in the respect that okay, we've got a platform that the, that the people are interested in, maybe there's a way we can do an iTunes thing rather than fight it and right. try and squish it. Do you think that would have made a difference? Yeah, I, th I think it would have if they had embraced the, again, moving forward with technology instead of sticking your head in the sand and going, oh, don't worry about it. That right. really was, I, I saw it firsthand. But, you know, like anything else, we can't go back in time. You no. know? So there's, you know, you just have to, you have to find new ways to bring music to the people. And that's, you know, that's what he's doing with the vault. I mean, he's trying to find a new way to say to people, music has value. This is what I've done. I've worked hard on this. I want to share it with you. And that that's it. I mean, it's and it's not going to be anywhere else where you can download it or, or, or stream it or whatever. It, he wants to bring value back into it. So with the value piece i want to also clear up the misconception that people still have about this particular project i've realized in my what i do for a living i sell real estate residential real estate that if i want someone to really not read anything i would give them as much i can as i can to read and they won't read any of it so going on that preface of okay not everyone's going to you know visit this website can you please break down the three pricing tiers and exactly sure. what each one of them will give you and how that experience rolls out? So if you go to GeneSimmonsVault.com, which is the website, the vault experience costs $2,000. For $2,000, you get a vault handed to you at an event in your area, in your town, you know, in, in, a, in a neighboring town by Gene Simmons. So basically, for two thousand dollars, you get absolutely everything that you need. You get the box, you get the action figure, and Gene is at this event. You meet Gene. You spend quality time with him. This is not a rush through meet and greet. I got to get out of here. He spends time with you, photo ops, autographs, whatever you want, and everyone gets their time with Gene at the event. 
At the end of the event, everyone comes together and there's a Q&A section and a, place, a section we call songs and stories where Gene will play some of the songs and tell you the stories. He'll play Got Love for Sale with the Van Halen brothers and then and then tell you how that came about. He'll play some of the other songs and, and you know, you get to you get a vibe for that. And that's the vault experience. That's a, the, There's a lot of confusion with people like, oh, it costs this. No, no, it's $2,000. GeneSimmonsVault.com, the vault experience. You get to meet, hang out with Gene, get hand delivered the box set, and then get to spend even more time with him at night. And it's a mean, you know, I'm sure you've done the kiss meet and greets. Oh, yeah. And they can go relatively quickly. Yep. Um, and this is, you know, we, we he, he, Gene really likes to spend time. He really wants to talk to them and find out about them and hang out as opposed to just, you know, run through a room and sign an autograph and, and move on. Okay. So that's the basic thing. $2,000, the vault experience. All right. So let me ask you before you go on, I want to know, sure. is there anything that, Gene won't sign at these things. Instruments. Okay. You know, Gene, Gene has his own. He has his own deal. He has yep. his own line of uh, Gene Simmons acts. He does his own thing. So yeah, he does not. Generally speaking, across the board, unless it's something tied into his his as his, uh, his bass business, he doesn't sign any instruments. Okay. So there. But you I've, go. Never, People... I've never. I've There's nothing else that you know. Yeah. You know. Okay. So just sign. don't bring a guitar, and you guys will don't, be fine. Or don't a bring a guitar. Don't bring like a bass. Don't bring a drum head. Okay. You know, you, you'll be you'll be told ahead of time that there's no way he's going to sign that. All right. So let's say, um, just for clarification purposes, let's say one city has 20 people right. that show up for this experience. The next day in Detroit, you've got 100 people. So right. when you have a certain amount coming, will there be time slots like you will give people a section in time? So, you know what I mean? So you get... Yes. Yeah, it's not. It's not going to be. It's going to be organized. It's definitely not going to be bedlam. It, you will have a time slot. You will. There, what, the way we envision it is there's a there's a room where everyone will meet. It's kind of a party room. The music is playing. There's snacks. There's so forth. And then your name is called, and you go to the next room, and that's where we have the backdrop. You meet Gene. You get to talk and hang out with Gene. You get the photo op and so forth. Then you rejoin the party room if you choose, or you go off on your own and come back a couple hours later Perfect. for the for the sights and stories. Yeah. So no, it, it's not one of these situations where everyone's going to be just there trying to get to them. Perfect. It would be very organized and very streamlined. So you will get your quality time with Gene. You know, that's that's a big part of it. Okay. So for two thousand dollars, people, you get the vault and you get the experience, you get to meet Gene, he'll sign autographs, take photos with you, and you get your private time with him, two grand, okay. and it'll be at like, a, you know, a ballroom at a at a um, Holiday Inn or a, some hotel or something. Or yeah, it'll, it, it'll be, and yeah, or perhaps a club, you know, we're working out the logistics of what is going to be the coolest experience for people, where we're, we're going to be able to, yeah, and so, and you will, for $2,000, you get your vault handed to you by Gene Simmons, and you get the quality time, and you get the you know autographs, photo ops. You know everyone will everyone will have their time with Gene. Okay, perfect. So now let's move on to the next one. Okay, so uh, while we're producing this, you know we've we've got we've got the tracks kind of all put together. So we've offered something. It's an exclusive. Again, the next two levels they're exclusive. Yes. They're, they're they're off menu levels, if you will. So the next one is called the producer experience. So if you want to be an executive producer, we actually did one in New York uh, at Electric Lady. We're doing one coming up in Dallas this weekend um, to, with, with people who came in. You pay, you pay and you spend an hour in the studio with Gene. You hear probably about 45 tracks or pieces of 45 tracks. You give your opinions on the tracks, you know, what works, what doesn't work. There's a couple tracks in there that we that are mastered. There's some that aren't. You know, we're trying to get a vibe for what people think. And then you kind of help him shift and decide what the final track listings will be. Uh, so then what I saw, that book isn't necessarily carved in stone. That is correct. more your working prototype. Absolutely correct. Okay. With, with, the you know, with the track listings and so forth, there is still wiggle room. There is still, for instance, there's, there's a song called True Confessions. Um, yeah, from the most solo. Notice, right? But it's the it's two or three early. We have three early versions of it. Uh, most notable because Katie Segal sings background vocals on on that. Um, we're not going to put three versions of the song on the box set. Right. There might be two. So he, you know he's having people listen to the three to see which which ones are best, which ones are not best, things like that. So there's 
it's it, there's definitely a, a work in progress when it comes to what's going to actually finally be on that. And, and then if you're an executive producer on the vault, you spend that hour. You know, the reality is Gene never seems to be in a rush. So we in the we did it in New York. It was two hours. You know, in Dallas, I would imagine it's going to be close to that because once he gets in there and and you're hanging out, and in that hour, also you get whatever you know, autographs, photographs. You know, whatever you wish to do in that time period, there are T-shirts. You get exclusive uh, producer T-shirts when you buy the producer experience. And then if you're a producer, I don't know if you can see, but I'm just rolling off. But on the inside here, there's going to be a plaque and your name is going to be engraved on the, all the executive producers will be engraved on this plaque. Oh, nice. Okay. And so, and that will be on every vault, not just the vault you buy. Every single person who gets the vault will open it up and see who the executive producers are and who helped, you know, make this thing a reality. And so far, the reality is we sold one in New York. We had a guy named Gino from Florida. We have a family from uh, Dallas that's coming to one, to one in Dallas. And then we'll see, you know, we'll see. We're, we're going to other cities. We have them available. We're going to Tokyo in in Las Vegas. If people are interested, it's it's underneath there under 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 offers on GeneSimmonsVault.com. Okay, and they can look into it. Okay, perfect. So now, third experience is the Gene Simmons Ultimate, the party experience, the home party experience. Let's say you want to have a party at your house, and you want Gene to actually come to your house for two hours. That can happen. Uh, if you have fifty thousand dollars, Gene will actually come to your house and spend two hours at your house, hand deliver your vault, photos, autographs with up to twenty-five of your friends, videos. If there's an acoustic guitar there, he'll pick it up and play a couple of songs. And it, you know, it's one of these things where you know, look, not everyone has fifty thousand dollars. Right. Fine. But if you do and you want to throw a party, you know, a lot of uh, these days, a lot of different uh, rock stars, you can corporate events, hundreds of thousands. Right. For fifty grand, you get Gene at your house. Well, and because it can be up to twenty-five people, you could literally—and we talked about this a couple weeks ago—you could get twenty-five friends together, all to pitch in an equal share, and now you get Gene for two hours for a private exactly. event. So, and, and yeah. again, he'll sign. He'll sign stuff. He, other than instruments, yep. you know, we we actually did. <clears throat> to make a video for the home experience, we wanted to, you know, we wanted to see a proof of concept. So we actually had one of our staffers here named Eric, who's a giant Kiss fan. He he said, look, he goes, I know a bunch of Kiss fans. You can use my house. Let's see what happens. So we set up a home experience, and we didn't. T we told people, Gene's coming, and we didn't tell him much much more, uh, just to see what happened. And we spent hours at this guy's house and gene hanging out with all the fans listening to music playing acoustic guitar signing everything and anything you can imagine and uh again yeah if you have if you have 25 friends you each kick in two grand you you know you get the bragging rights of having said you know i mean what other rock star is going to come to anybody's house and hang out at a party for you know for two hours well yeah and, and also too I want to make it clear that I'm not shilling for Gene here okay I'm truly right. interested in hearing yes Keith is but I'm truly interested for all of us to hear about this in detail and I think it's a it's a fantastic idea and again the fifty thousand dollars is a lot of money but when you look at the corporate events and what a lot of people get hired for for speaking engagements it's not out of line. And the yeah. other thing to keep in mind is, is that you guys spend the money the way you want to. We've talked about this. You vote with your wallet. And that's if you want to spend this money, you should be able to do that because that's your money to do whatever you want with. So before we start getting reamed here about all of this, Gene owes us nothing. Right. Okay? And, the rea nothing. and the reality is everyone has access to him for the $2,000 vault. It's not as if you only have to be uber rich to, to get to him. Right. You know, for the regular vault experience, for two thousand dollars, you can get to them. You can get and get everything you'd want in that time period. But if yeah, if you have fifty thousand dollars, then great. You know, then and you want them to come to your house, then that's that's your call. Do you think with the fifty thousand dollars, if you did that experience, could you get them to come in costume? You know, it's funny. We we've actually had that co we've had that conversation uh, yeah. several times because one of the original ideas that we came I, I wanted to see was why don't we have a transformation event where people come and they pay Watch and they it. get to see Gene come in as Gene sit down in the chair and become the demon and you get a picture at the beginning with him but 
the the makeup because because of the balance with Paul, you know, Paul and he are are, are partners in a business. Yes. And yes. this is not a Kiss project. This is a Gene Simmons project. So we initially, you know, like any Kiss fan, we all had that same dream. We're like, oh my God, we'll see him transform, and it'll be great. And, uh -huh. and then the reality is, you know, he's got a business partner in Paul, and that's yes. Kiss business. Uh -huh. And the, the the demon and the makeup associated with that, that's Kiss. You know, right. and Gene Simmons solo. And again, because this has so many different aspects of his personality and his music. It didn't fit to have him put on the makeup. Yeah, although and, I think it would be great to see him sitting on my horse at my house. Yeah. That would be the demon sitting on, you know, that would be fantastic. Yeah. We were talking about, can we mow the yard? Can we get him to, you know, do something? Well, hey, we, we walk the dog. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, the reality, though, is everyone else at the house can be in the demon makeup when he shows up. That's, Absolutely. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. So. Okay. No, fair enough. Um, so this project launches then, like, Keith was saying on the 31st of December so you have plenty of time to figure out if you want to do that home experience or you want to do the $2,000 vault experience it right. sounds can, really exciting they can order now I mean the, the Gene Simmons vault is live we, we are taking pre-orders uh, and you know you they can order now they can pick the city that they want to have this happen in um, and and then it all kicks off as far as the delivery starts happening in uh, 2018. Do you ever have any um, alternate plans? So like, for instance, I live in Minneapolis. Let's say all of a sudden there's 20 people who want to buy the experience in Minneapolis. Is there ever a way to alter that schedule to get him to a different city that maybe you didn't think as many fans would go to? Or is it pretty much you got to pick Detroit or Chicago or something near where you are? The, the the reality is, you know, from a scheduling standpoint, to secure the venues, the clubs, the hotels, we kind of have to know ahead of time where we're going to go. If we found that there was a groundswell of demand in a market, you know, that we weren't counting on, then the conversation has been had around here that we, we would have to address that and we would have to move towards getting something done in that city at some point. And just, you know, the flip side of that is if we have a market listed and the sales aren't there, in, you know, in, in a market – then you know we're not going to go to Croatia or something if we sell one. We're going to have to find places where people supply supply will meet demand. Basically, right. So it's it's a fluid schedule in the respect that even though yeah. you guys may not see your city right now, it doesn't mean it may not happen in the future as this all develops. Yeah, but but the other side of that is because it's a limited edition. You know, if, if we 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 say to people, if you if there's a city near you within you know 100 200 miles whatever it is and you can physically get there you might want to get there because right. we don't we don't this is not an endless proposition i mean it legitimately is a, a limited edition it's not something that we're going to be able to keep rolling out it's going to be it's going to be out there it's going to be offered when the reaction is going to be what it's going to be it's being manufactured as we speak and then when they're gone, they're gone. And there's no. And the other thing is, I know, I don't know if it's a follow-up question, but everyone's like, well, what's the cut-down version? Are we going to be able to, you know, buy, you know, the vault later on, or just buy a, a, a one CD? And the reality is, Gene's vision is not to make that happen. He right. wants. He very much wants this to be again, putting the value back on music. He very much is. This is the vault, and there's there are no plans down the line to do a different version of the vault. That's the, you know, or a cheaper version of the vault, or a downloadable version of the vault. That in Gene's mind, that's not something that he's he wants to do. Yeah, so it's essentially this or nothing. So then, is there an end date? Like, are you taking orders until a certain amount of time, and then we're finished, or what? Are you produ like, are you producing as many as you get, or are you going to have a few extras? So in case, let, let's say someone can't come to any one of these events for whatever reason, and it's I don't know, March or April of next year, and they're like, God damn, you know, it already happened in my city, but I, I, God, I really want to get one of these. Do you think that's possible for them to either A, jump into another city, uh, or do you, have you thought about that at all? Yeah, it's, it's absolutely possible to jump into One of the things that we're doing with the vault is just because, let's say, you live in Minneapolis. If you want to go to Las Vegas to the vault experience, you can do that. You know what I mean? It's right. You can you pick the city where you want to go. We're not restricting people and saying, oh no no no, we're only. Um, so that's an option. As far as as far as it's not an endless production. I mean, once we it's only a few thousand, and once we once we hit those, once we sell those, that that will be it. I mean, it there's there's not there's not talk of a second run. There's right. not talk of a wheelless fall. I mean, it's. 
it's you know there there's a lot of work that's gone into making it as special as it is and we kind of got to focus on that and 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 say here's the you know it's here get it where you can you know and get it where you want to get it and then when it's when it's done it's done okay Fair enough. Well, there you go. So you guys, if this is something that you're interested in, you want to do, you've got a certain amount of time, but the window will close. It's not going to be endless. And I like that you address the fact that there's not going to be a watered down version or anything else is going to change. It's literally going to be this or nothing. So you're not going to be getting something that's going to show up in Walmart a year yeah. and a half from now that is a smaller book with all of the discs in it. So if you yeah. truly want the hard copy, this is how you do it. Absolutely. And if I may shill, GeneSimmonsVault.com is where they can find any other information and where they can actually order it. Okay, there you go. Anything else you want to add that we didn't talk about? No, not really. I, 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 first of all, I want to commend you guys for your dedication and doing the podcast. I, I'm actually a fan and it's, it's nice to see and I'm, and I'm glad... I'm glad you got to see the vault in person because one of the biggest, you know, biggest challenges of this is people, until they actually see it, they go, well, it can't possibly be worth $2,000. And the reality is once you see it, look at it, touch it, look at the stuff that's inside, and then realize there's a meet and greet attached to that, you realize that it's amazing that it's only $2,000. Well, yeah, and again, it's the experience piece of it. It's no different than doing the KISS meet and greet. You're getting the concert, but you're also getting the experience. So right. that's a big piece of that. Plus, and, and, the, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, and also with you know you do the kiss meet and greet this is a kiss, this is the meet and greet with a giant takeaway piece you know right. you, you you're leaving with 38 pounds of rock and roll history you're not just you know you're not not just a quick photo op and everything you're getting the the meet and greet and you're leaving with that which is crazy right well there you go so you know you guys know where to go genesimmonsvault.com and uh, i think you have a q and a there too in case there's any other questions we missed or didn't cover you know, for people to yep. get answers. Absolutely. And and we okay. do, you know, again, there's a number when they go to the site, if they have even further questions, we have live customer service people who are KISS fans and know what they're talking about and, and they can answer other questions as well. Okay, perfect. All Excellent. right. So, guys, go to GeneSimmonsVault.com if you're interested in purchasing the experience in any one of those three and get one of your own Gene Simmons dolls along with all the other goodies that uh, Uncle Gene has for you. Thank you guys for tuning in, and Keith, thank you so much for taking time out of your day. I know you're very busy. I'm sorry we couldn't get all three of us together, but Skype is just problematic some days. So this is well, one of next, those days. Next, we'll figure it out for next time. Yeah, absolutely, because you're, you're welcome anytime you want. Appreciate that. All right. All right. So, thank you. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Again, Tommy, i got to say you did a good job on that. Thanks. I appreciate it. Well, you guys helped too because you gave me a couple questions too. Make sure you ask this. We got to cover that. And then just watching all the reaction online and then talking with Mark about it and then seeing it last week helped me to know what to ask. You know, and because there's a lot of confusion. And I will I will admit that after watching that <laughs> <laughs> That's like my kryptonite. <laughs> you know, think about it this way. You can do that 359 more times. <laughs> Does anybody else have this much fun on podcasts? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, oh, God, you're killing me, Smalls. Ser ser seriously, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm coming out and sit, after listening to that interview for an hour last night. And I know I've previously said I would not spend this kind of money on a vault. I am seriously thinking of spending the two grand to get this experience. I've, I, I, haven't, am, I, haven't I actually looked am at, too. I haven't looked into it any further, so I got to see where the closest one is to San Francisco. But, you know, the way he explained it. Um, the songs that are on this and the fact that there's going to be a track listing coming out, I'm sitting here going, man, this really, I'm really considering getting this now. Well, it and really, from it, 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 it uh, we've talked about this a million times, guys, these are the experiences of a lifetime. Are you going to be laying on your deathbed 
there are many years from now going, you know what? I'm glad I saved that extra two grand. Don't get me wrong. If, if you can't afford it, I understand that. Because, again, like I said, if this would have been years ago, I couldn't have. But if you can't afford it and you want a special memory, I know this is going to be dynamite. I know this is going to be. Because that's what they do. They're great at this stuff. Meaning well, just the band in general. From the Paul Stanley ones to the to the Gene Simmons thing to the Kiss meet and greets. You never, I've, again, I've never walked out with a frown on my face, and I guarantee that's going to be the case again. Well, and the other thing I want to say, too, that I thought was really interesting about what he, he shared is how they're going to set up that um, VIP time with you if you purchase so, this. Yeah, so it is basically a one-on-one time, even if you're doing the $2,000 experience. Yeah, and so if they have everybody in a room and they have snacks and, and drinks and stuff there and you get your name called, then you go into a private room with Uncle Gene and spend time with him. So not only will you get your autographs and get photos and that, that's all great, but you actually get to talk to him without having to worry about the next person right behind you who's kind of already like you know, bright-eyed going, can't wait to meet him and have him sign whatever it is that they're going to have him sign. You actually get him to truly, like, focus on your conversation and your time together. And I think that that's the way to do it. Whereas, like, with the Kiss Meet and Greets, which they, they do a great job, but what they do now is they put everyone in a line along the wall, and they just literally work their way down. And they're never in a hurry. They'll spend time with you and talk to you. And the last time I saw Gene at one of those, I heard him say to many different people, okay, do you do you have everything that you need? You know, did you get your photos? Did you get your audio? Is there anything else I can do for he, you? He is usually the last one out of that line. Yes. But my point being is, is that here's a different special experience. It goes well beyond that kiss, meet and greet because you get to physically spend quality time alone with him without the other distractions and someone just kind of peering over your shoulder waiting for their turn. Yeah, I think that's a key component of this whole thing. I, I, I agreed. Now, I knew that ahead of time, too. Had this just been a cattle call, you know, I, to be fair, I probably still would have went if it was just that, too. But this isn't that. Gene's going to tell you stories about the songs, and you're going to you know, you're going to get to have some fun. And well, there's that on top of just spending some time right. with them. So I also would encourage each and every one of you that are going to buy one of the exper- these experiences to really think about what you want to ask. Mm-hmm. So you don't get that and go, uh, 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 you know. Yep. Um, one, of the, one of the things that I found interesting in, in your um, Q&A with Keith was how Keith described Gene keeps everything, but he doesn't necessarily keep it in the best condition, the safest locations. Right. It's like, hmm. Does that sound like anybody else we've discussed on this show? Maybe Mr. Fraley. <laughs> Mr. Fraley. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as he was describing, oh, yeah, you know, we put this tape in and we tried to bake it and it just fell apart when we tried to play it. I'm just like, <gasps> You know, oh. that that gave me a thought. This would have been great. Too bad we couldn't have gotten Mark involved with the making of that whole thing through Rhino. Because I would have loved to have filmed the look on his face when he went over to Gene's house, not only to get into Gene's office and see all of that stuff, but to see him like going through stuff and finding a tape that's just been kind of sitting there under a pile of what, other what, stuff. What, what's that tape? Oh, that's a tape I did with Joe Perry. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. There is, there is something on there he's going to have to have with Joe Perry, I think. Yeah, there is. He, he confirmed yeah. that. Keith confirmed that in the uh-huh. interview that there's, was it Mongoloid Man? Yes. Yeah, he yeah he gave us a couple of bits that I hadn't heard yet, so that was very nice of him. And Keith is a super nice guy, too. I mean, just salt of the earth, very easy to talk to. So that's part of the reason I mean, why. I, 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 was, you know, I, was, I was happy to hear him confirm they will be putting out track listings in the near future here. Mm-hmm. And he confirmed very directly there will not be a digital version of this ever released, and there will not be the inexpensive buy the CDs and the book only version of this. The what you see right now is <laughs> all that is going to be released. That's pretty cool. Well, it's yeah. it's one of those things where a lot of fans are like, 
I'm just waiting. I'm going to wait for the seventy dollars ten CD version to come out. You know that'll come out a year. Hold from on, now. you're going to wait. Someone's going to wait for the free torrent to come out. That's exactly what this is. Is and Gene's not stupid. That's well, I don't, you can't you know. stop that. No, you just can't. So Gene's using his head, and God love him. Uh, obviously, uh, you guys have seen the numbers too. He, he's not going to go broke putting this thing out the way he's doing it. And it's it is selling people. Pre-orders are happening. Yes, it's true. And, well, and because again, it's you're, you're you know just getting this, you're getting the sizzle. You're getting you're you're getting way more than just the box. That that's and and that's the reason for the price. And I'm a willing participant. And that's I great. might well, and, and you, I might be. I got a few months to think about it, but I'm yeah, I'm on the fence too. Well, so then if Mark because you're probably one of the first ones who will do this, then guess what, guys? You're going to get some exclusive um, footage from our Detroit master on this. Well, I think Detroit's one of the first few. The very first one, I think, is in L.A. Right, but my point is, is you'll be able to really come back and give us a full report on how the day was and what you did and all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm certainly looking forward to it. Matter of fact, that's going to be an action-packed show because that Tuesday, which will be just a couple of days after, boy, I'm going to be one tired son of a gun flying down to Atlanta on Friday the 19th, probably flying out of Atlanta late on the 20th and going to the Gene thing Sunday the 21st. And then spending Christmas in hedonism. I mean, you know, or excuse me, I'm sorry, the New Year in hedonism right after that. Yeah, you are going to be it's worn January. out. He's Locked. in January. He's already, yeah. He'd already gone to hedonism. Drink a lot of water. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so yeah, it's going to be, a, and, and I think we really, we need to get our act together this time because we didn't have our act together when we did the New York thing. Uh, even the LA to to a degree, we need to do more footage for people whoa, so that we can. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We've been doing this show for four years. We haven't got our act together yet. Why do you want it to happen now? Oh, I'm like, going to try and make an effort I to like film because we were just having fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to make an effort to to, to do more <laughs> filming uh, at the Atlanta show and more photos and stuff so we can give a, a really good recap. Hey, you, you guys, this is usually Tommy's thing, um, the shout out thing. I was just flipping through our site because I haven't looked at our Facebook site in a while. Michael, you were just talking about the Lynn Goldsmith book. Um, I love this comment, it just caught my eye. Mike Shoopy, is that how you know last name? I ordered mine after I saw Mark was going to open his. Knew there was a good chance that if knew that there was a good chance it would be good if Mark was going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely there you go. right, Mr. Shoopy. Mike, <clears throat> absolutely right. I, I opened mine uh, after the show and uh, could not have been any more thrilled. So, yes, go order it and by all means open yours and enjoy it. It's uh, it's a fantastic book and uh, can't sing uh, Lynn's praises enough. What a great job. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so um, homework for this week. We've got a bunch First one is send us videotapes of you opening no. up and no. destroying Kiss merch. No. Yes. <laughs> oh, you know, you can destroy some Spencer's crap. I don't give a shit because I don't care if that gets open. So. Well, then, no, I want to see then, who's then, got then, enough balls to open up like a 70, 78 uh, van model kit. Nobody's that. Oh, and put it together. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Listen, I'll. Hmm. I have an. A 70s model van kit that I have not assembled yet. Why would you? Should do we do that? a show of me putting it together? <laughs> yes, like what you did with the Lynn Goldsmith book, just piece by piece, just a little videotaping as you put. And today oh, I'm putting shit, the wheels that broke on. Off. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! There's a whole another podcast series here. What? Oh, what? Man. You know, have you have you guys ever seen? There's a YouTube series called um, "Will It Blend," where 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 people take like industrial no. strength blenders and drop stuff I did, in. I did see that. Like I did see iPhones that. and anything else, they just Nico drop dolls. them in. Will it blend? <laughs> we could do that. Like, all right, this week, yeah, it's the Jim Simmons Mego doll. What happens to him? <laughs> Oh, yeah. This is a great new series. 
<laughs> I'll just start crying. <laughs> well, that's how we judge whether it's a winner or not. How many tears does Mark shed? Right, and and like and and it can be something simple. Like if you guys have the Alive Two album, put all the tattoos on. No. <laughs> 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 I haven't had this much fun since. I know this is awesome. Last since... week when you took a tongue off. Yeah. No, this is even better. I was going to go back to Tommy. Remember when we dropped the the needle on the double groove? Um, Creatures of the night. I love it yes. loud. Yes, I do. We were drinking. It was a drinking game or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which one would it land on? Which, would it, which song would it land on? This is good. All right, can we go home now? All right, so that's that's homework number one. Destroy your kids' merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> homework number t- number two. What do you think of the Vinnie Vincent video? Yeah. Your thoughts. And, okay, and then homework number three is this, what are you excited about with the uh, vault? And, and is what Keith shared with you enough for any of you that are not purchasing it or weren't going to purchase it to now purchase it. And home yeah. number four, Lynn Goldsmith, Kiss, 1977 to 1980. Order it now. Based on the video you saw of me opening it, which, are, are you getting it? Have you already ordered it? Let us know what's going on with that. Yeah, and we've never, ever bullshitted you guys. We've always told you the truth. And I'm telling you, this Lynn Goldsmith book is a absolute must-have. Mm-hmm your collection must have it's not like well you know if you get around to it 35 dollars plus whatever the shipping is plus you, i'm assuming you can maybe get it at barnes and noble someday down the road i don't know but order it what, that book is going to display great in a kiss collection even if you don't have a big kiss collection if you just have that up on a little stand it looks dynamite everything about the book is great and plus i always here's here's the thing because we're kiss fans we love attention to detail. I love the, the uh, what is it? I don't know if it's gold leaf or what is it? The pages. There's, Michael, yeah, there's, yeah, there's silver. There's silver, silver. On, on, on the. I've never seen anything like that in silver like that before. Yes. It's just, that's just so cool. Because I, I opened I mean, it. This well, is I, one of those things that if, if you don't have a big Kiss collection or really not into the collecting thing, but always maybe kind of wanted to be, this is a great piece to just have. Out in the open on a, on a desk. And, and yes, this this is like a Japanese obi strip. Yes, mm-hmm. this comes this comes off. So here's what here's what the book looks like without that little strip. I mean, it is just a gorgeous, gorgeous, well produced book. Well, and I when I got mine the day that it showed up, <clears throat> I showed up at home around dinner time. So while Cheryl was still making um, dinner, everyone was kind of around. Uh, my daughter Josie, her love that shot. Uh, yeah, um, my son Adrian and his girlfriend Hannah. We were all there, and I opened up this FedEx package, and like they all came like and gathered around, like, "Oh, that's really cool!" And they aren't even Kiss fans. That's how cool this book is. Yeah. So that's homework for. Lynn's book, um, and she'll be on. We're recording with her next week to talk all about the book and her history with Kiss. Um, I think that's it, guys. Mm-hmm. Show is kind of all over the place, but I think there's a lot of cool stuff. I hope yes. you stuck with us to the end because it started off kind of serious, but you know, sometimes you got to do that. That's you got to fast forward button is people. We still yeah. to this day have to educate people. There's a little button that's either FF or like double arrows that you can click and it goes. Zzzz. You can also just take the thing, and move the cursor thing across, yeah. you know. I like the guy who said um, last week's show should have been a two parter. Why do we need to make it a two parter? Why don't you just, just stop, stop after it 45 minutes and come back tomorrow and listen to the rest of it? <laughs> I do that, you know what? When I'm doing paperwork at work, I uh, I like documentaries. It's great to have a documentary on in the background. But if I get done, I just hit the pause button, go out, run my errands, come back, and finish with my paperwork. Hit. 
That's Voila, the, it's still there. That's the beautiful thing about most <laughs> software that you listen to, podcasts or videos or anything on. When you click stop and then you come back tomorrow, it remembers where you left off and will just start automatically. You can make our shows 10-parters if that's what you want. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a lot of people who will divvy it up over three or four days while they're driving back and forth from work. Oh, I've heard that. I've heard that. From yeah. People. Posted that whenever I'm driving one end of the town and then I listen to the rest and yeah that's awesome. I just noticed too, without a guest, new YouTube shows are right around six thousand after a couple of days. Boy, we're losing fucking viewers faster than hell. It's amazing we have more viewers in four days than most other shows have in a week or a month. And then we're the ones who say if you don't start doing it this way, you're going to keep losing viewers. Keep losing viewers. That's almost 6,000 on YouTube in just a couple of days. Where are we losing viewers? Yeah, and that's I, not I, Spreaker I, I or iHeart. I, I just looked this morning. 1,500 <clears throat> people watched me open up Lynn's book. <laughs> See, that's still not as exciting yeah. as watching Mark eat pizza. <laughs> <laughs> that number was insane. It's like 4,500. <laughs> Imagine if we sat down to a meatloaf meal, everyone would be oh, uh, and all be you 10, can 000. eat, an all you can eat seafood bar. Oh yeah, I tell you what, you know what? Any of my friends, or any of the friends of the show in in Louisiana, because I, I guarantee there's going to be some dynamite seafood there. Oh, there Where's is. The there is. To go. I've never been to. I've never been to New Orleans, so I'm really looking forward to it. Actually, I'm not. I wish we were going to Miami. <laughs> We're gonna have the craziest day. We're gonna Liz and I are flying down on Halloween. We're gonna to go to my folks' place in Tampa, and we're gonna stay there for a few days. Then we're gonna fly from there. We're gonna to fly to New Orleans, go on, uh, go on the Kiss cruise, come back, hang out a couple days with our friends from the cruise, and then fly home to Detroit from there. So, on. Mark, you need to think about what you want on your guitar picks for this cruise. I need to make those up soon. Hmm. So think over the over the next week or so. Think about what you want your guitar pick to look like and say. And I'm sure oh, Tommy I, I, will have some input on that. No, we're not letting Tommy have any input on that. <laughs> so think about it, because Mark Mark well, will have Mark will have another round of exclusive three sides of the coin guitar picks on the cruise. Okay, so there is so Mark for you here in. Uh, Metairie, which is just like kind of a western-ish suburb of, of Louisiana. Are you looking for seafood or swinger joints? Swinger joints. Oh, God. <laughs> there's, there's the Emerald Coast Social Club and then the Colette New Orleans. Both of them are all adult entertainment, and one of them has three stars and the other one has 4.1. Ooh. Yeah. So you're set. They even have stuff on Yelp. So you're golden, yes. dude. <laughs> when my kids watch this. <laughs> Don't listen to the man. Oh my God! Blood. This is the Tommy we love. <laughs> what did your What did your son say that day that he 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 peeked in on the show? Oh, you don't want to know what he said. Oh. <laughs> that was awesome. That was funny. Yeah. So, anyways, all right. Um... You, you got you got four <laughs> homeworks. This should be really good this week. We expect to see a lot of answers. Um, three sides of the coin.com, facebook.com slash three sides of the coin, YouTube, Spreaker, SoundCloud, everywhere you can find us. Leave your homework. We love, we love, love, love. Even the hate. Reading we love comments. the hate. Yeah. Get All it. 12 of you. Thank you for, uh, for tuning in. And yeah. uh, that's it. We'll see you next week. Three sides of the coin. We're out. Take three sides of the coin with you anywhere. Download your five-star rated free smartphone app today and listen on your Android or Apple smartphone. Visit android.threesidesofthecoin.com or ios.threesidesofthecoin.com. Want to get your official Three Sides of the Coin logo and Shocker T? Now you can. We ship worldwide. Get yours online at shop.threesidesofthecoin.com. For interviews and media inquiries, contact Izzy at IzzyPresleyProductions.com. 
Download your free free copy of the KISS School of Marketing. 11 Lessons I Learned Working with KISS. The number one downloaded business book on Noise Trade. Go to books.noisetrade.com slash Michael Brandvold. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. So you love the show. Go to itunes.threesidesofthecoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks.